Welcome back to the Golden Fox Podcast. After a long period of time, it was just, we didn't expect it to happen, but shit happens. And I've already said it first curse word, and there goes my monetization, unless I censor it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do that. Yeah, no, so apparently, um, as I'm talking about this, um, I found out that there's a weird guideline on YouTube that in the first 30 seconds, if you curse, if you swear, it's permanently demonetized, which is really dumb. Yeah, Pan yes. Pizza has to do that with his podcast. He starts off, like, the first 30 seconds just rambling, and then it's into the his intro, which has a f in the word and all that. Well, I got to censor those now. <laughs> well, I don't think that we were 30 seconds in. Were we? I think we're less than that. I don't know. Well, th it all depends whenever, like, it goes... Because it's, like, it's when it's when it's on YouTube. Obviously, when I'm on, like, live on Twitch, like, we're already, like, four minutes in at that point, but we haven't started, to, like... The, like, because there's that turning point when it said, Every welcome, everybody, that's part of when it started. Anyways, uh, you can already see who's on the left, who's joining right now. We have Anno Dreams, Dusk Flare, uh, Riley, and Kitty. I think this is the first time you've joined this podcast? Hi, I guess so. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, for some reason, your icon wasn't glowing. It's okay. I'm here. I'm alive, and I'm well. Okay, then. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how have things been going for the past two months? I mean, there's been some... There's been some interesting things going on. I had fun at Babs. Was kidnapped. Ah, uh, that's huh? right. You went to Babs. How was Babs? It was fun. I was saw fun. friends again. Yeah. And did you go to Babs? No. Oh. Dusk? I wish. No? No, I uh, did. Uh, okay. I will it is very unlikely I will ever be able to go to Babs. Alright, fair enough. Well, yeah. It takes place at the same time of every year and it's very inconvenient to anyone who is religious. Right. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, all right, so we're gonna. I, I, I maybe we should keep that under wraps unless Dusk is okay with it. Why would people know I'm religious? It's just inconvenient. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so on that note, um, things have been kind of interesting for the past uh, two months here. Uh, one of which we had an eclipse happening. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. No, yeah. that eclipse was horrible emotionally and astrology wise. <laughs> oh, good lord! Because it was red. <laughs> sure. No, it, uh, when you have planets conjuncting each other and you have planets like doing their own <laughs> and all around. Oh God, I ruined your monetization. I'm so sorry. Anyway, it's already planets, ruined. <laughs> ener well, planets and energy and stuff like that and astrology. It's gonna be one fun time. Well, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people who really like astronomy. I love uh, understanding the nine. No, eight planets of our solar system i'm like even nowadays i'm still mentally wired in saying the nine planets of our solar system because well, it, it wasn't until later on we found out that pluto was no longer part of our planet well okay as astrologically it still is astronomically it's not if i remember correctly yeah it's, or it's like it's an object the thing about astrology is is that it has objects with assigned meaning um so for instance there are many celestial objects that are listed as being part of your astrology that are not planets like the lilith comet for instance is not a planet but it has a place in your astrology okay mm. end of the show end of the show yeah. the moon also has a place in it but the moon is also not a planet and so does the sun which is also not a planet but i'm a leo so my planet is sun I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't see the eclipse because it was raining. Yeah, I've I've heard a couple of other people say that they didn't get the chance to see the eclipse, and I can understand yeah. that frustration that you're missing out. Um, and I do want to point out that anybody else who missed out on it, I'm very sorry that also happened to you. Um, but the very plus side is is that with the internet, you get to see the picture. Um, you get to see like what the photographs were. Um. And I will say that from experience, it was nice that uh, Keyframe and I, we decided to, you know, just walk out of our apartment and just sit down. And I was taking a couple of pictures, both with my phone and my DSLR. Um, and we sat there like we didn't get like a clear shot. I tried to zoom in as much as I could. Um, and the funny thing is, is that um, like I've noticed there were a couple of uh, comparisons or like some comparison video whenever you want to like get a shot about a uh, close shot on something that's out in the you know distance of space and everything 
because and like this came to mind because I had this fun idea at one point that you know Key and I would just like drive out somewhere in an open place where there's like no city lights or anything like that you know no light pollution uh, we would have a telescope and we would zoom in to find any particular planets however there, the expectation is that you want to see the fully detailed planet like all the uh, satellite pictures are taken from but the reality is it, it's it almost feels too blurish. Like, no matter how much you try to get some clarification off of a telescope, um, it's not going to be fully detailed. Um, somebody was able to uh, set up um, a telescope and actually have a camera attached to it and zoom in as close as possible to get a view of Saturn, and you could barely see the rings around it. Well, the rings are also disappearing. Bear that in mind. Yeah. No, they're not, uh, not disappearing fast enough to be in remotely within your lifetime. Do you want to know... How long until that disappearance is? How long? Oh, I'm sure a billion years, but anyway. Three billion years, seven billion years. Yeah, you would not notice it right now. True. Oh, enjoy the rings. Yeah. Uh, They'll be around in our lifetime. Yeah, and then, like, it's, it's, a, it's a shame that they're fading away, because the rings is what I loved so much about that planet. Well, I mean, it's going to take tens of millions of years for this to occur. Just keep that in mind. I mean, sure. <clears throat> so... Uh, a few other things happened. There's a few little minor things uh, to get off, and I I'm at a complete brain fart here. Um, Wait, Golden, did you take her up to a nice like makeout point and then just like you know did a nice 1950s passion pit thing? Okay, that is oddly specific, and that's none of your business. <laughs> oh, I'm very specific. Okay. I'm just a sucker for old school romance. Okay, your Kitty, I need story to, melt my heart. I, I need to play that a band of the same name for you because I, I think you would like it. Oh, send me more <laughs> music, please. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll DJ after the after the podcast because oh, I found new songs. Yeah, because we don't want to get involved in any any more copyright stuff. Which, by the way, you've also been hearing more information about. Um, What's his name? Angry Joe going through some more copyright issues. Oh yeah, with Halo. Yeah, because it's it sucks. Paramount's Halo, I should say. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll we're gonna put a pin on that for now. We're gonna put a pin yeah. on that for now. So, um, I've already been trying to talk talk to Vlad and Solar, and they have a lot to say about Halo, and I'm pretty sure that Aona Dreams has that. But I want to put a pin on that for now because the other topics we're gonna be going over are a handful of movies actually um and if i were to list them down we got a couple of um well there's like a few things i want to share personally but let's see uh there's a bit of a, an issue with that we want to talk about with the oscars like it's been around for a while but i just want to get that off my chest we've seen the bad guys chip and Dale rescue rangers some of us have seen sonic 2 and last but not least it uh we will talk about uh, the Halo series from Paramount Plus. So, um, a few other minor things that I was thinking about making a topic up, but it didn't really have enough weight to it. Uh, Riley, as I may recall, a uh, trailer for the Fourth Kingdom Hearts game has been released, and I'm pretty sure, like, knowing you, you're a big, big fan of Kingdom Hearts in general. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the best way to describe it. And that is a very, very perfectly timed. <laughs> but, uh. Um, that is. Kingdom Hearts 4. I am the excite. Um, I'm hope. I'm. Un honestly, as far as development time, I am expecting, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 thing where we're just hearing about it now. So I'm expecting, like, six years onward. <laughs> I'm not expecting anytime soon. Lowering my expectations there. Not really much else to say, but, uh... I've seen... Yeah, but... Mm, I did notice that there were, like, a bunch of, like, spin-off titles in the meantime. No, there's only, like, one or two, and thankfully, there's not gonna be as much as there was between two and three! Like, God, no! Yeah, there were, they, those, those had such odd titles, like, 326 days or something like that, and there's, like, fraction numbers? 358 over two days. Oh, good uh, God, Birth dude. Birth by Sleep, Recoded, which was originally a mobile game on, the, on like, flip phones and shit. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I, I love you, Nomura, but, like... Please don't do it again. I, I, I can't. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, not really much else to say about that, but Sora is real boy, and I miss his big shoes. All right, so something I normally don't do whenever I'm on the podcast, uh, because I save those for my MLP reviews, uh, basically, like, it's, it's for whenever I get fan art of, you know, my Carol, my pony character. I still have yet to get a, um, uh, my own mascot character outside of the pony character. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm still keeping the pony character. He's adorable as hell. Um, and speaking of something that there's been an ongoing, fen- like, okay, not necessarily a phenomenon, but it kind of happened three times in a row where I had three particular fan arts throughout about one week. And they each kind of have their own story. So in this case, I'm going to be showcasing uh, three of the uh, three of the uh, the pictures here. And I just want to give a shout out to these artists because they're fantastic. Um, and that's that's the really big benefit here. Uh, so it's going to look a little disorienting when they're being showcased on um, on the uh, screen itself. Actually, let me see if I can adjust it just a snitch and center to screen. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and trans, uh, transition the pictures over, and I'm just going to show you guys each one individually. So first runner-up uh, was by the name of Izzy Yusenko. I hope I'm saying that name right and not butchering it. I'm going to go ahead and transfer that right now, and I'm just going to show you guys this picture. It was tweeted on... Um, it, yeah, it was tweeted, and I absolutely adore this picture. So Izzy decided to participate in... You know, just drawing my character wearing what looks to be a yellow maid dress. It looks like something that April O'Neil would wear. And I say that because... It's adorable. Yeah, because April O'Neil wears the yellow jumpsuit and everything. But um, the detail on this one, I, I it's very interesting. Like, you have, the, like, the stockings and the, the back legs and everything. Um, also, yes, uh, for those who don't know, I periodically like to dress my character in girly clothes. It... I don't know why there's it. There's just something fun about it. Because it's adorable. Yeah, because it's adorable, mm-hmm. and and it's fun to draw. It is. <laughs> it is very fun to draw. So, um, and you know, so whenever people draw like my character, you know, in these kind of clothes and such, I'm just like, I'm completely like, I'm more excited to see that compared to a lot of other fan art. And keep in mind, I love ver- like several kinds of fan art. So there's no real favoritism involved. Well, okay, there is favoritism involved, but I don't look down on anything. I don't look down on any fan art that does something different, or if they have, like, some silly scenario, or just something drawn for fun. You know, I accept any kind of fan art uh, fan art possible, and I'm always grateful that there's people who enjoy my work and just want to just doodle and draw my character in something. Uh, it's just I have, I have quite a... I have quite a... I'm trying to find the right word. Um... A pa- like I, I wouldn't say passion, but I just I have a heavy appreciation for my character being dressed in girls' clothing, and the we- like. What's even funnier is that, like, even as a kid, whenever I've seen like you know kids do like makeovers and stuff like that, there's always a stigma where a lot of boys would turn against it and everything. And I, I always found that to be natural, but it never bothered me for some reason, and I don't know why. So it kind of just grew on me over time, and I just embraced it. So with that background out of the way, this is Izzy's picture, and it's absolutely cute. And um, the other two pictures, uh, one of which actually has a little bit more to talk about because there was a funny little debate. Uh, I'm first going to transfer them over. And here's a picture number two, and this is from Draft the Filmmaker. I hope I'm saying that name right. So, this picture, obviously, he's in his harem outfit, which is something that I always loved uh, doing renders of. Like, I don't know what it is about harem outfits, but I just like doing that a lot. So, the background behind this one is, uh, there was some kind of trend going on on Twitter, where basically somebody, um, like, the the basic uh, thing is, is choosing one or another. Like, make me choose between two things. And Dusk here decided to ask... Um, because of the two different, um, div- two different outfits, the harem outfit or the bunny outfit. And that was actually kind of difficult for me to answer. And eventually I decided to go with the harem one. Draft decided to pitch in saying, Hey, why not just, um, why not just Oops. go ahead? 
Why not both? Yeah, like why not both? And he decided to pitch in saying, "Hey, um, I could, uh, I can make something like that work." And I'm like, "How is that possible?" Because I always found those outfits to be dramatically different from each other. So he decided to like, well, I got a pencil, uh, pencil and paper in here, uh, here indicating he's an artist himself. And I've seen his work before. Uh, one of my favorite pictures he drew for me was my character jamming on a guitar, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't know if it's posted online anywhere. It used to be online, but then he changed his DeviantArt account. But uh, anybody who's watching it on YouTube, links down in the description. You can check that out yourself. Uh, he decided to draw this. And what actually makes this more hilarious is he firstly was going to draft it. Like, he was going to sketch it out. And I was like, are you seriously going to do this? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, he said he was busy with his job and everything. Little did I expect. He Like, I thought it was going to be a sketch still. It, this came out in full detail. Knowing very well, he had too much fun drawing this. And he loved it. So, that that's just, again, this is just one of those occasions where whenever it comes to artists who want to dedicate their time in drawing somebody and who they like and such, it's um, it's very well appreciated. <clears throat> so, I decided to post that. And it's a very interesting take. So, uh, most of which it's just the harem outfit about 90% of the time. And... It's just, it has ears placed on it. But if you look closely around the torso, it's a, what is it, a crop top? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a crop top. Uh, yep. Yeah, so normally it's a vest and a bra, but this one is just a crop top. And I, I can see where that's going because it's like, it's kind of like, what is it, skin tight or something like that? Something that's tight enough to just like wrap around the, uh, you know, the portion of the body? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. So... Apparently, there's nobody else commenting about it, so um, I think you guys want to see the biggest one. So this one was uploaded not too long ago. Uh, I think it was uploaded last night, uh, based on you know at the time of this uh, at, the, at, at the time of this being hosted. And just make a little adjustment here. Just give me a second, and finally the last one. This is from Brogar. And I, hey. as I have that transfer there, I'm just going to go ahead and just move it to here. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Brogar blew mine out of the water. Yeah, no, this was, <laughs> this was a very interesting one. So he called this one uh, the Phoenix Imp Empress. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I saw that earlier. It's really good. It is. It I saw. We have like a Mayan queen. Yeah, it's very like kind of Aztec culture sort of based uh, dress. Like it looks like something off of uh, the Road to El Dorado. So mm -hmm. where's your kingdom? Your your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I mean, you do look like a queen, bish. Well, there like there's a lot of like. Yeah, there's obviously the gorgeous dress, but he's got makeup on and everything. He's got eyelashes and eyeshadow. Slay queen, yeah. <laughs> Never say that again, please. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> yes, we love a queen. Clap emoji. <laughs> Spinel lover saying Brogar basically turned you into Cusco. Actually, you know, funny thing. Um, like first off, I love the Emperor's New Groove. I mean, who doesn't? Um. But uh, how many of you have seen the sequel, uh, Kronk's New Groove? Nope. Nope? Okay. So uh, there was a scene where Pacha is... No, not Pacha, but um, Kronk. Wow, I can't believe I got those names mixed up. Kronk is trying to roleplay a scene with his father, who he has not one, but so many people who's trying to impersonate a girlfriend. And then in comes Cusco cross-dressing everything, and I'm just sitting there laughing my ass off. So when you picture that, I think this is something Cusco would also want to go for if given the chance. Or if I had the personality and the behaviors of Cusco. Kronk is the goat. It's so good. I'm uh, just reading the chat. Squeak, 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 squeak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, I don't know if this is going to be the only time I would ever share fan art of this, but the, like I just wanted to share these out there. Uh, I may start sharing some of these over the course of any future MLP reviews, which, by the way, um, I am aware that Make Your Mark is coming out very, very closely. I had to rework my script um, and for, uh, for a new generation. So I know that it's going to look a little awkward that I'm reviewing that movie now, even though the show is already starting. 
fun. I'm sorry? I don't, I, I don't think anyone has a problem that your review is coming out late. <laughs> mm. oh. I think you're the only one holding yourself to that standard. I kind of hold myself to that standard because I used to be criticized for that. Well, that's other people's oh. problems. We can also yes. sometimes be our own worst critic. Oh, oh. sorry, kitty. Yes. No, no, you're fine. I was just gonna be like, essentially, yeah. Like, oh, oh, God bless it. Sorry. God bless what? it. Yeah, I don't like saying God. So, um, okay, then. my my system just crashed. Hold on. Oh. Lord's name in vain, Oof. that kind of stuff. I might disappear. Sorry. You're fine. Yeah, you're you're Love you're you. good. Re. Love you to ski. If you need Love to reboot, go ahead. It's not that. I just lost all my prog my progress. Oh, oh. no! Oh. I know that oh, feeling. Poor thing. Oh mm. god! I yeah no. You you put so much effort on something, and then all of a sudden, the uh, the program crashes, and the progress is all gone. I know that yeah. feeling. Oh, god. oh my god, dude! Pain. My my heart. Oh. oh. Uh, yeah, no, I know that feeling. All Sorry, right. didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. You're fine. We're, I, I will think. Come up to Canada and give you a hug. You're only. You are good, Dusky. Mm. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Magical Star Flash said it best. Uh, it feels soul crushing. Oh, it does. I've had that yeah. happen before too. Yeah, it has. Okay, I don't know why that sound effect is coming in. What sound effect? Uh, the sound effects whenever somebody like donates or subscribes or something. Oh, like cause that. Noah subscribed at tier one. Yeah, no. Um, I I have this set to where there aren't any notifications, so I don't know why it's That's doing that. That's yeah. weird. All right, so uh, I guess you guys want me to talk about the major topics already. That'd be good. Shall right. we begin? Yeah. So. This one's a little bit old. Again, you know, I meant to talk about this back in April. Uh, the Oscars came and gone, and it was an absolute disaster, to say the least. Uh, we have we have the one big elephant in the room, and that is when the three actresses were talking about animation and saying that kids watch them over and over and over again. And, like, obviously I'm not the only one. Everybody else took a major issue with that, and we all have the right to do that. And yeah, yeah, it just it just that that really irked me. I just hear that it's just is this the reason why Oscars are so dismissive of animated movies? Like they forget that Beauty and the Beast won an Oscar, and like uh, not just that one, but also uh, what was it? I think Spirited Away also won an Oscar. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I just like I don't know what their deal is. Like, we have these three actresses saying that, oh, they're just something for kids to watch. Even if, arguably, they're for kids, can't adults enjoy them, too? I mean, I'll well, get... there's no... Go ahead. There's not to mention the whole the fact that they had the movie Flea in there, which is about a guy, like, uh, trying to flee from the war yeah, country and shit. Yeah, a refugee from Afghanistan. Like, yeah, so you're going to say the kids are going to watch that. There have been numerous videos pointing that out. That oh yeah you're gonna say that animations for kids um uh Bojack Horseman Rick and Morty Beavis and Butthead oh yeah Heavy Metal Fritz the Cat that was the first animated movie to get like an NC-17 rating as I recall. The problem is the people that are in the Academy are usually Hollywood old guard and and like people who just basically if you win an Oscar you're in the Academy. It's it's basically like even Meatloaf was in the Academy. I'm dead serious about that. It's a popularity contest in the end. Oh yeah, and, and a lot of them are just like old people who barely see animated films. Maybe go with their grandkids once or twice a year. So yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. Also in the chat, like Sausage Party, Watership Down. Um, <laughs> uh, what is that movie called? Um, the Plague Dogs. The same creators behind Watership Down made that one. Yeah, that does shock me. Yeah, the guy got shot in the face by accident. Oof. That totally wasn't traumatizing at all. Yeah, so you're saying that that's something kids would watch? I'm Okay, so here's the thing. Technically, some of those movies were things uh, that kids watched and were supposed to watch. The issue isn't that. It's that the issue is that it's dismissive because it's for kids. It's like, well, 
just because it's for kids doesn't mean there is an effort. And if that's the way that you're going about your life, then what the hell are you raising? Because if you're not putting effort into what your kids watch or play with, then you're not making them important. And kids are important. And well, this is a... Oh, sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. Well, this is the thing people seem to forget about animation in general. It's not just a genre. It's an art form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's it's not just a blanket thing. Or just because you can make anything in animation doesn't mean it's lesser because of that. I think that just allows for more creativity in a lot of ways. I mean, CGI, for instance. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and like as of the recent years, we have seen various styles of CGI now instead of just your typical CG polygram, um, uh, polygon designs that look. And, like, make it look all bouncy and everything from uh, various movies. Now they have more uh, style to it. And, again, I'll, pu- I'll put a pin on that one. Uh, what The thing that uh, most people didn't even talk about, and this is something that I just, like, it, it's very short. But these these were said by the three actresses who said that, oh, these are just kids' movies that they'll watch over and 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 over, and over again. Those three actresses, I'm like, dude. You're playing the live action roles of these films that brought you here. You are in no position to say diddly squat about animation. Mm -hmm. If it's so bad, why are you in these movies? Yeah, exactly. Especially the one actress who um, is, uh, for future reference, going to be playing Ariel in The Little Mermaid. I'm just like... Yeah, that wasn't a great introduction. That was a horrible no. introduction, and it's like, do I even want to see The Little Mermaid now because of that attitude? Not that it matters. I didn't bother supporting these Disney remakes. Agreed. Because Disney itself seems to have forgotten that it's built on animation. People like it for a reason. They have an entire two generations trapped in nostalgic loops because of animation, not because of live-action stuff. Yeah. Like, the one thing that most kids remember as live action was Mary Poppins. Yeah. That's it. Everything else they remember of Disney is the animation. Yep. Because it's brighter, it's colorful, it gets your attention better. But that doesn't mean that it's something only that, like kids can enjoy. Adults can also enjoy it. If anything, adults really could enjoy it more than kids because in their times in their lives, you know, they're dealing with like, BS reality problems that they just want to escape into a colorful world by watching an animated movie. I mean, Walt Disney himself said that he saw animation as for everyone and not just for kids. Yeah, really. In fact, his his line is one of my favorite lines. He says, You're, "If you are only making animation for children, you are losing half your audience." Yeah, it's uh, what was it? Um, uh, damn it, I completely lost it. You're dead if you aim for kids. Um. Aim for kids anyways, or something like that. I'll have to look. Something like that. Yeah, I. it was in my head. I'm having a brain fart here. I apologize. No, yeah. no problem. You good. Okay, so uh, something else that I didn't know about. Like, okay, I didn't necessarily watch the ceremony itself because I never really did like the Oscars over the past several years, especially since the 2010s, because at one point I was trying to have hope that um, that something would change. Uh, like, there's there's just, there's a lot of things that if I would just don't want to derail the discussion too much, but at one point I was hoping for, like, some movies to get proper attention and such, and it just seems like whatever it is they focus on are movies that we either never heard of or was heavily marketed for. Like, I guess they want to provide some attention to some of them, the only reason I watch the Oscars, honestly, to see if any like movies that deserve it get their due, and if there's anything entertaining, rather good or bad, in that regards, so I can snark about it on Twitter. Mm. <laughs> and oh god, somebody's mentioning that. Yeah, no, Riza, we do not want to see uh, like talk about that moment. But no, um. Something Get that a- fucking moment out your mouth. <laughs> now this has become comedies at this point. Yeah, no, okay, so I will give credit where credit is due, where all a lot of these problems are coming in that I would have hated this one even more, is that uh, Shea Frillis Productions talked about um, his issues with this Oscar ceremony, and he said that this is without doubt the worst, and upon its explanation... 
Uh, first of all, they focus so heavily on a lot of funny skits, including uh, some actress that nobody liked hearing. Riley, if you... Talking about Amy Schumer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my oh. God, that bitch bag. That yeah. was painful. You remember that, Kitty? I remember uh, I remember something that. about... Um, oh, you, you can now be arrested for... What is it? Cracking bad jokes? Or someone was making a joke about that based on the... Um, some recent political headline, and then it said underneath it, someone replied, Amy Schumer looking visibly worried. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame her. It was, oh my god, like, <sighs> does that mean we will outlaw the dad jokes? So, because I might be no, dad, jo dad jokes are something called classics, and they shall remain Damn. forever and eternity. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. No. Back me up here, kitty. I like. Yeah, I'm backing you I like some it. of them. There are some clever ones that I do unironically like. Mm. I'll be sure to inundate you with more of them. Yeah, uh -huh. and something else that I also was kind of irritated about. Thank that, you. Um, mm -hmm. Some also uh, some nominees like best editors mm -hmm. and such like that. Like categorically, like some of them didn't make it into the live um, the live reel compared to what is archived online because they had to do commercial breaks. But they'll spend their time putting in these comedy skits. Like, I don't... Yeah. Like, I understand that you want to provide a little extra on something, but this is equivalently putting too much whipped cream on your Starbucks frap. And you just... I'm sorry, oh, too much what? Too much whipped cream. I don't understand the question. I... It wasn't a question. I'm kidding. Oh. It's because I like whipped cream. Oh, okay. But no, like, long story short is that you just, you don't need to put so many comedy uh, sketches involved to try to add something. People come to the Oscars to see who won something, and a huge chunk of them were taken out. Or, not taken out, but they were disregarded, or they were not, like, aired on ABC or whatever network host the Oscars at. Hmm. It's, yes. I mean, the Oscars have been dying for years. The only Good. reason they got the, the big views this year is because, well, <laughs> the slap heard wet around the world. <laughs> well, uh, well, also, it's been, uh, like, it's already been stated earlier when the three actresses were bad mouth and animation. Yeah. Like, that's just like, okay, that's that's kind of, um, I mean, in their case, like, those three actresses are pot meat in a kettle. But the fact that this is the issue of what Oscars have going for it, like, I would just okay. encourage... I would, what? Well, no, finish what you're saying, and then I'll give you my take. Okay. It just seems like more people are not going to want to watch the Oscars after that. It's not just after that. Oscars has become pay-to-win. Yeah. They're so out of touch with reality, just like so many other things these days. Um, Not getting into specifics, but... One... Like... like Nothing that's supposedly um, giving, like, oh, these are the best of this, this is the best of this, is, like, no one's asking the actual public. Yeah, no, the, it's all internal Academy voting. They're extremely selective of who's allowed in the Academy, and in more than 50% of cases, someone found out through some sort of internal survey, um, they didn't actually see any of the entried movies when they placed their vote. They, oh, yeah, like, they pretty much almost literally just vote for whatever their friend votes for. Like, or if they knew uh, something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Lindsay Ellis made a good video about the Oscars and how, like, back in the day, well, before 2017, uh, the best way to snuggle up to somebody to win an Academy Award was to, to get in good with the Weinsteins. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, or, that's, that's well all, yeah, let's go with that. happened with some of them. I'm assuming that's what you guys are saying. Well, let's well, go I, with that. I'm, I'm sure that was involved, but no, more mm. than just that. Oh, okay. Don't like, listen to me. Bribing <laughs> the Weinstein game, like bribing. But, but based yeah. on yeah. but based on what Dusk said, I'm like I'm not too surprised because I do remember that, and I always take this with a pinch of salt when I mention his name, Adam Gonchier. I hope I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. From uh, Adam ruins everything. There was an episode about going to the uh, ceremony of what Oscars and everything, and most of them are just paying to win instead of like mm -hmm. actually yeah. investing the effort that some people put in. And it's like obvious, it's an obvious uh, shady tactic 
but they just they don't really bother to put in the put in their own effort because again they're disconnected from reality you were saying well here's here's the thing before like um i think it was the 70s the oscars did have some kind of relevancy to them but they were it was once like the movie the deer hunter came out and like it was like everybody in, inside the academy loved it, but people like didn't even watch it, so it bombed at the box office. So the academy lot was like, "Hey, how about we propped up with this film that nobody saw?" And by giving it a bunch of awards at the uh, academy, even though like most people didn't see it, oh, I'm yikes. not saying that the views have to equal quality or, or like having an award, but that's still like. They're propping up a film to win by doing this. Like, again, I can understand if you want to give support to movies that they feel like they're left under the shadows because, you know, like they put in a lot of effort, but it just didn't get enough attention. Nowadays, like outside of the uh, outside of the Oscars, in order for movies to become successful, they have to market the hell out of them. And they market it so much that it's almost like brainwashing people. It's usually like a lot like... I remember a lot of people were like losing their shit when Crash won the Academy Award for Best Picture. If anybody remembers Crash. I remember um, at one point uh, a foreign movie won an Oscar, what was called Para. Um... Parasite. Parasite, yeah. And there was like, there yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, and there was one guy um, I saw from Critical, and he was so mad that like Joker didn't get an Oscar or several other ones and he was saying that the Oscars went woke or something like that why because they allow other people in like I, okay that's like my least problem if anything that's was sort of like a good move as far as I'm concerned because yeah. you're saying like oh you know it's not just Hollywood that's the big deal anymore other people can finally get in and when effort is given and like, that is that it's is... worthwhile and I will definitely support that uh, because, like, okay, even before Parasite, Spirited Away, as I recall, won an Oscar, and that was a film mm -hmm. from Japan. Yeah, yep. so here's the thing. The way that that got in, quote-unquote, is because it was dubbed over by Disney. Okay. Yep. So Disney was allowed to get it in because if it's backed by Disney, it has to be good. At that point, that meant something. Um, but, like, like... Parasite had nothing to do with America, as far as I know. Like, like they didn't have the backing of a massive studio. It was just that good. Yeah. I, I didn't watch it because it's not my thing, mm -hmm. but I could appreciate that. I'm and I like that it sort of made Hollywood sort of wake up and, and say, if like, very briefly, but they woke up and said, hey, maybe, like, open your eyes a little and realize you're not the be-all and end-all. Yeah, and you're hoping for more Canadian flicks to get in, aren't you? Aren't you, Dusk? <laughs> no, not really. I'm just messing Look, with you. You guys <laughs> use us for sets. That's fine. Uh yes, Toronto, right? Montreal. Montreal Bitch, too. X Men oh, yeah. was shot in my town. <laughs> oh, I, well, I knew Deadpool was shot in in in. Uh, yeah, but that's because Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. So. Ah, right. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. I know, right? Everyone does. It's like no. That's ours. <laughs> Back off, he's ours. <laughs> Wait, let me guess. He's a, he's a Canadian in air quotes, but he has dual U.S. citizenship, and yet his mansion is actually in L.A. But he's Canadian whenever it's... No, no, I'm just saying, there actually is an unfortunate thing about that, where it's like, they're dual citizens, so they can work in multiple industries, because there's a Canadian labor law of sorts when it comes to... Course, when it comes to certain productions, um, if you're using a certain amount of Canadian actors or it's Canadian production, then everyone in it has to be Canadian. So to get around that, some of, and then, and if you want to get in other projects, they'll get a, a U.S. citizenship to just kind of get around it. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll be they'll still announce that they're Canadian, but it's like Canadian in air quotes because it's like okay, cool, but your main address, mansion, and uh, where you spend ninety percent of the year is in probably 90210. I have no idea, but it wouldn't shock me. I know, uh, like, Tara Strong has that, I think. Yeah, but <laughs> that's... Okay, happening. cartoon labor laws are different than movie labor... than the film labor laws, because the cartoon labor... like, voiceover work, you have to be Canadian. Like, there has to be a certain amount of people that are Canadian versus American in the show, or they will not allow you to use the studios. And most of the animation studios that are on this side of the ocean are in Canada at this point. Except for Disney. 
You know, Spinel Lover, I'm, I'm reading the chat here, You're saying... You're breaking my heart as a voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> but I, know most the, I know most of the anime dubbing is actually done here in Texas. Funimation mm -hmm. has their studio here. No, I, I After, like, Wait. I've heard some pretty shady-ass things about those fuckers. Like, I'm well, not gonna lie. Hold, hold on, well, hold, let's not get into that whole thing. Anyway... <laughs> So I'm reading the chat, and Spinell Lover says, and I quote, "I it would have been hilarious if Paw Patrol made it to the Oscars. That would I be, don't think um, it's good enough. I, I like their eye animation, but that's it. Boomers bugging, being bugged by their grandkids to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's the thing with that. Um, my dad, when I was younger, took me to see the first few Pokemon movies, and that's, Aww. like, some of the best memories I have. So, yeah. like, I, I am down with, with bugging your parents. Go bug your parents to go see movies with you kids. Yeah. If there are any kids listening to this, why the hell? But anyway. <laughs> horse guy who, pretend, who does horse reviews. So <laughs> yes, according, according to YouTube, anything with horses is for kids. So, congratulations, you're family friendly. No, no, like, uh, uh, apparently anything that's animated is for kids. Okay, boomer. Oh, God. <laughs> you, YouTube. Oh, my God. I know half of my audience Get... is child or men. Get your shit together, YouTube, please. <laughs> I don't want little kids anymore. I'm not oh, seriously, loving. they made YouTube kids for a reason. Why are they bugging us? Yeah. Because they want to be adults. Well, yeah, then I'm that's not our show. problem. That's their problem, isn't they, it? Because they want to be universal. They don't want to have to segregate different age groups or age gaps. Of well, people. in that case, you maybe segregate them anyway. Because you can't have an entire internet be for kids. You can't cater to children. You can't have a... Th the internet lie. is not meant for that. Yeah, and in, in, miss in general, you can't have a thing for all. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie, I do miss some of the comments on animated segments from shows on YouTube where they would like discuss the themes of the episode or the characters in the comments and stuff. That was like, and now most of them are turned off. Yep, because kids. Mhm. Mm there's a there's a number of changes YouTube has, and that they just yeah, it, it's just a whole different can of worms. So at this point, I just. In regards to the Oscars, I, I seriously hope that either two things, either one, they get their act together and the, like something happens where like their ratings drop so bad that they can't even like afford to host another one or two, yeah. just don't even bother watching them anymore. Cause that's what I've been doing. Like it wasn't until this year that I would hear about, you know, what's been going on uh, at the Oscars and everybody is just like rambling on about it. Um, because like before, I haven't been been... watching them for years for this reason. Yeah, no, just like, like up until then, I just didn't even bother with them. Like, oh, this one, this, or this one lost to that. Like, okay, I don't care anymore. They'll go for like the lowest hanging fruit. Okay, I don't care. Because I'm just done it's... with them. Go ahead. It's still funny to me. Like the last time I really gave a shit about an Oscar award was when Spider Verse won. I heard about and, that. Like, and it was also really funny because apparently on some Target shelves, Disney had already put Academy Award winning movie for Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. It's unfortunate. Oh. oh, this is why you don't jump to conclusions. Yeah, but oh, it's I Disney. What I was uh, ba basically, the, the the Academy Awards has been fumbling for years, and they, they they know they're they're trying desperately to get more people. And like they they did that whole fan vote thing, where like that one moment from just from the Snyder cut of Justice League made it in and stuff. And it, they're desperate, but the problem is it's all like Hollywood elite voting on this stuff, and not really the general public or anybody. Of, like, well, then it's not really like, public like, voting now, is it? Aren't there famously some actors who, like, refuse to join the Academy for similar such reasons? I thought there were a few high-profile ones. I know there were some, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Wasn't Robert Downey Jr. one of them? Don't quote me on that, I'm asking. I don't know, honestly. It wouldn't shock me, though. Like, like, he... I love Robert Downey Jr. He's hysterical. Who? Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. Downey Jr. Oh, yeah, sorry, you... You fired that out real fast, and I was like, oh, I love Fred and What? Hey, Zoe. You're fine. I'm just being silly. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. 
Get a rub you too. Get a rub you more. Get a rub you too. You most. <laughs> Come on, we're still live. <laughs> I'm so. keeping it PG ish. This yeah. is very PG. I hope you know. Yes. We could be oh, much, much worse. No. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, exactly. No. So I think we kind of set our piece on the Oscars. Are we ready to get into the fun stuff? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm sorry. You said you wanted me to stay PG, and now you're talking about fun stuff. <laughs> cool. Well, cool. well, make up your mind. <laughs> well, speaking of fun stuff, um, well, we've uh, we've uh, had the chance well. to see the bad guys, which um, yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. about a week or so ago, I um, I saw this movie, and we all we all we all had quite the time watching it. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you had your uh, things to say here. Free bait. Free bait. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a very generic and very easy movie that isn't it, it's cute. It's it's not like a must see though. I'm probably gonna forget about most a lot of the movie a lot later. But it's just a simplistic fun movie that you can just not pay attention to. I mean, from a story perspective, it's pretty generic and you can see some of the turns coming a mile away, but at the same time, I like the execution. Yeah, it is. It's very it's very it's very, ex- very simplistic, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very well executed in a way where they just embrace, you know, this formula about their roles of being as, you know, antagonists and then eventually just like coming to terms with themselves and going through some kind of identity crisis or at least uh by some of the characters out there. Um, I don't know if there is much to spoil here. All I will say is they definitely like, okay, first off, I love the style of animation they go for here. It's not just your typical CGI look. Oh yeah. They have a somewhat cell shaded sort of look. They have some cool, like poofy, uh, uh, misty sort of animation that is like hand drawn. Like they, they blend some of that in there along with. I mean, just look at this picture itself. You can see, like, some parts are a little flatter than others, but it it still has, like... It has enough to get a sense of depth without, like, just being your typical CG-looking movie. Oh, yeah, there's good, like, squatch and stretch to the characters. Yeah. So it reminds me a little bit between a mix of... uh, This is going to be the obvious one, but a little bit between a mix of Beastars and... um, Oh, God, now I just blanked on the other one. Darn it. <laughs> well, like, um, Beastars but a bit more plasticky, but, like, in a good way. Like, I am 100% fine with it, and that it goes for that comic book look. That's what I was going for, comic book look. Yeah. Um, the, the Spider-Man movie, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Yeah. Yeah, the... Uh, I'm loving how much Spider Verse has has like inspired in animation the past few years. Like I, well, I am more optimistic towards animation in general as far as movies go. Well, it's like it's not even just Spider Verse because like because we're wind, like winding the clocks all the way back to 2014. We've seen the Lego Movie, and I still remember like back when it came out. The whole time I thought it was stop motion because of the way they were moving, and it turned out it was all CGI. And I was like, yep. how did you do that? Um, and then. Like, obviously, Spider-Verse comes out, and it was one of the most gorgeous-looking movies we've seen about, you know, where you fit in your world as a hero. Just the different types of... Like, wasn't it that they did that movie? (laughs) Cartoons is just for kids my ass. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah, because... You got a problem with cartoons? Yeah, because kids will watch them over and 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 over. Pot me the kettle. It, it's it, I I love what they do with the just the different motions like the animation in general just mm, it, it's top notch. Uh, it the story I don't really know how to really talk about the story because it, it's it's basic characters are yeah oops. yeah the the, the char- like each of them they have their own like distinct personalities in some hysterical way um, and that that's that that's what they focus more on but the main character like. Uh, should we put a spoiler warning up here? Yes. Yeah. So always put spoiler warnings when talking about movies, just in case something slips. All right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and. All right. I gotta change this a little bit. Give me a second. Yeah. No. Outline. Outline. Come on. There we go. All right. So there we go. Slapping on their spoilers. So. Um, nice. A uh, wolf. Uh, the wolf guy. I'm just going to say that because there's like there's wolf, there's snake. They kind of go by a couple of like just their animal names. 
Uh, so basically, these are characters who have pretty much embraced and got used to like calling themselves uh, villains or antagonists because they look threatening. Like people have always been terrified of them. Uh, the snake, for instance, like he said at one point that his entire life, everybody's just terrified of him because he's a snake. Everybody was terrified of the wolf because he's a wolf, and they're often looked at as threatening characters. And if, um, like at one point, the wolf does something civil or something that's he does a good thing to uh like some kind of lady somewhere and then it makes mm. him question himself about if whether or not doing something good for people for once would be a nice change in pace and that's where the movie's uh theme comes in and that's going through some kind of identity crisis of where you stand like where you not necessarily belong but where where you could put yourself if possible how you feel how you feel about yourself versus how society views you in a way too and and how doing something good might make you feel good about yourself and i like that this is done when it comes to your typical villain type of characters and that's what these characters were written as i mean they're if i may recall they were based on a set of books before dreamworks adapted them Yes, from Australia, according to um magic star flash, magic star flash yeah okay yeah. Give me my wolfie husband. Jeez. <laughs> but, like, I like... God, the wolf and the fox. The wolf and the fox have just been everywhere. Yeah, and, mm. like... But, yeah, um... But, like, I think that's a good way of approaching them. Because, like, we're kind of, like, approaching to somewhat of a different generation where, like, everybody's already seen a been there, done that with these type of characters, and now they're having a different spin on them. And this is just one of those occasions where... When it comes to delivering a spin, it's always it should be just be whenever it's appropriate. And yeah, I have more to say on that when we get to the the big main course, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So this is just one of those occasions, and it has its own particular narrative on it. And I'm just saying that in advance too. I'm I'm kind of just rambling on a little too much here, but I really enjoyed watching this movie in uh, in general and. Um, anybody else, uh, if, if I missed anything else or if there's something else you want to add, you guys feel free to, you know, pitch in. Okay, but my Miami biggest react. sorry, go ahead. I only saw a clip. It reminds <laughs> me of Miami Vice. Fair. The wolf and the snake fucker remind me of, uh, Snake fucker? <laughs> yeah, snake man. Ah, snake man. That is a very different thing than snake fucker. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Kidding. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I do. I, I do. I will say that just by the, like the first opening segment, where they're actually the dinosaur. We scene, there. The di- <laughs> that, It reminds me of Tubbs and the fucking other guy from uh, Miami Vice. I'm getting my husband into it. He likes the Gator Wait. Elvis. Wait, Colton, what were you saying? No, am I am I too quiet or something? I'm no. sorry. No. Uh, okay. Uh, just- Go ahead. I was just saying there's multiple people talking at once, so it probably went over you. Okay, but uh, I just want to uh, point out that there's actually, like, I just by the opening segment alone, I love the dialogue and how the snake talks about how he doesn't, like, he never likes birthdays. And to an extent, <laughs> I kind of agree with him about all that. But the way they bounce off each other, I had Quentin Tarantino vibes from it. Yeah, it was, like, basically the, Pulp Fiction. Like Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, you know, I love me some Pulp Fiction. Who who wouldn't like that movie, you know? So And you will say my name is the Lord. That I pray my hands upon thee. Bam, bam, bam. No, um <laughs> but you can tell like this is the like what kind of vibe, what kind of uh feel and style you're going for with this movie. And just honestly, like, compared to other DreamWorks movies, I think they do a really, really good job adapting children's books into movies. Cause you have this you have Captain Underpants, which was based on like somewhat of a children's comic series. It was, no, it was a book book. series. Okay, so Golden. yeah, it was a children's book. And Golden, you're for- what? You're forgetting something. <laughs> what? What? The Boss Baby. Don't mention that. Wait, was that also a children's book? That was a children's book. Oh my it god! Is nothing, it you is know, I was like the children's book. Okay, then. Well. <sighs> Well, there goes my point. <laughs> I'm just messing. I, I mean, I, I mean, I know you're messing with me, but I was gonna say if, like the big example being How to Train Your Dragon, which was also a oh, series yeah. of kids' books. 
They're, it was they're a series not of kids always, books, but they weren't good kids books. I'd no say nine times out of ten, they do good adapta- adaptations. Yeah. yeah, and you know, just embrace working with the source material, and DreamWorks can have some very steep competition with Disney at that point. Because aside from that, like they go to make a bunch of parody like films and try to like, um, re uh, like rebuild the success off of Shrek, which was just a giant satire of Disney tropes and cliches. Well, nowadays they're owned by Universal, and I don't, I don't think Katz. Well, is Katzenberg? Well, I, yeah, I think he's still a producer, but I don't think he's creatively creatively involved with DreamWorks nowadays. Okay, <clears throat> but like so far, like okay, with the exception of Boss Baby, because I don't want to ever think about that. Um, I, I do hope that you know whenever DreamWorks gets their hands on another children's book to adapt, I hope they do a really really good job with it. Because I have a lot of faith that they're really good with working with, um, you know, that kind of material. Now, that's not to say that, you know, they want to work with original material and do something really good out of it. For instance, and was Megamind based on anything or was that something DreamWorks on their own? I think that was on their own, actually. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think that was based on anything. I could be wrong. So at this point, I think it's um, I think DreamWorks has been finding their niche in where they can head to in competition with the animation industry without trying to you know follow the success of anybody else, and mm-hmm. that that's that's like that's the major that's that, that's the major thing whenever it comes to other companies who are trying to follow what made something else successful because you're going to shoot yourself in the foot doing that. Every now and then you yeah. will succeed. So case in point. Why did the clocks back to the Disney Renaissance after The Little Mermaid, after Beating the Beast? Don Bluth tried to bank the success off of what Disney was doing with Thumbelina, and then eventually they uh, they did Anastasia. Now I've I've heard a lot of positive things of Anastasia. It was a box office success in Nor- uh, North America, not so much in Europe, from what I remember correctly, uh, if, I, if I'm mistaken. But well, I mean they knew the actual tale of Anastasia there, so okay, mm-hmm. so. That out there. Okay, yeah. so I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, um, aside from, you know, Don Bluth, uh, you also had, like, the Swan Princess. You had, um, what was that movie called where one of the characters was a uh, blind adventurer? Oh, Camelot. Camelot. Quest for Camelot. Quest for Camelot. Yeah, Quest for Camelot. So they're trying to follow the success of Disney, and it's them not being themselves. And then the tables kind of turned on its head in the 2000s where DreamWorks was becoming successful with their comedies, and then Disney wanted to bank off of that with, <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to even say the name, but they're trying to like catch up with the competition, and they did it in the worst way possible. I will leave it at that because I am trying not to lose myself. Oh, look at the little chicken! Shut up! <laughs> I am, I, I am going to strangle you, Riley. <laughs> What? I'm Why just looking like at a chick. Baby? You were saying, Kitty? Why don't you like the boss baby? Okay, well, first off, it's not the boss baby. It's, well, okay, boss baby, it, it just doesn't look right. Something felt off just by looking at the trailers, and I don't even know how appropriate or inappropriate it is for children. Like, I don't know if I would, like, if I ever had any kids, I don't know if I would want to show them that. You'd be an interesting father. A cute one, too. No, but basically Disney tried to follow the success of Shrek with Chicken Little by making a bunch of pop culture references and trying to be goofy and everything. The problem is, they did a terrible job writing a story. The thing that made Shrek work is not just because of how much they were satirizing a lot of the Disney cliches or the fairy tale cliches. They had a story in and of itself about how somebody feels rejected from society because of just who they are. You know, case in point, Shrek himself just prefers to be left alone because he'll might as well just get used to being left alone. And then he meets uh, Queen, um, not Queen, Princess. Fiona. Yeah, Princess Fiona, and the perspective changes. You know, break the cliche. Yeah. And at one point, we learn that Fiona is under a curse where at nightfall, she turns into an ogre herself. And yes. that's why she's been hiding herself away. Because you don't want to, like, you don't want to put yourself in that kind of position, but they execute it in a way where after it's shown in front of a lot of people, they get used to it. And Shrek, um, you know, just appreciates Fiona for who she is. 
And they switch it around where she accepts being the ogre side instead of just being the human side, which I know that it's a little bit of, it does feel a little forced in some ways, but it still gets the message across that you shouldn't judge people just by their appearances. And I think that leaves well, a good me uh, message right there. You were going to say something, Dusk? Attaching onto it. Um, part of the thing is, is people sort of, as usually happens, they miss the point. The entire point of with Shrek is it's not just turning it on its head. It's integral to the film. And a lot of these other films that tried to do the same thing miss the point. It wasn't integral. It's like, oh, let's flip this on its head. Yeah, but is it integral to the film that this is flipped on its head? And the response is usually no. And in that case, it loses something. Mm -hmm. Like, uh... No, that's one of the, if you don't mind me commenting, that's one of the most annoying tropes I see from people who especially think they're, like, brilliant. It's like, oh, I see a thing. I need to try and subvert it. And it's like, you didn't understand even remotely what the story was about, if that's your first instinct, or if you think that this is somehow inherently brilliant. And this, you're not You're not even a writer. And this basically adds on to what I said earlier. If you try to follow the success of others, you're just going to be looked at as a copycat, and it would also grow into a bit of a problem. And that was the thing... Uh, th oh, no, that wasn't just copycatting. That was just, like, they'll do something and they'll just try and subvert it because, oh, that's brilliant. It's such a cool idea. No, it isn't. So the, the long story short of it is you just need to have good writing in general, not just following tropes of, oh, this uh, is a thing or that is a thing, like from trying to recapture the fairy tale essence of the Disney Renaissance to, you know, the movies like Shrek that were more of turning uh, those tropes on its head and becoming just a pop cultural comedy. Um, there's, it's, it's not even just trying to execute that. You still need to have good writing behind it. And that's, mm -hmm. th and that's like, that's also why, like, when I see the other companies try to bank off of the success of that, I don't blame Shrek for that. In fact, DreamWorks didn't even expect Shrek to become such a big hit. They thought it, they like they even had something called the Shrek Chamber or something like that, where some um, animators would have to work for them based off of whatever consequential thing. I don't know. It was a weird way of explaining it, but it was a different approach compared to just you know whatever other movies that people were tired of. Because this is also coming out of the time when the Disney Renaissance was kind of getting tiresome. And they just wanted something different. And Shrek was just a huge jab at the uh, tropes. Fast forward to around the 2010s, and then we're finally approaching movies that are more style-driven. But when they're writing their style in, they're, folk they're also trying to work with what fits with the style. So there's the Lego movie where the Legos are kind of like stop-motion-like but done in CG, but also has a theme about building whatever you want at your own free will. Uh, you have something simple like the Peanuts movie from Blue Sky Studios where they had a similar animation style that has much more like fewer frames in animation and how like even their mouths I think were hand drawn along with each of the frames. And it's just about, you know, trying to accept yourself, you know, with a bunch of other kids that um, that Charlie was just trying to go through. <clears throat> and um, following forward with other movies, uh, The Bad Guys, which is what we come back to. Well, we went off of a huge tangent here. The Bad Guys yeah. is about being in the role of a protagonist and how society judges you and how you're trying to find something of how you feel with yourself. So they're sharing something more in common with not just the style, but the theme around it. And I think that that's a much better approach. And I do hope that this, you know, this successfully keeps up. Um, I, do, I do have a feeling at one point that eventually it's going to kind of get tiring and then animators will have to think of something else to do. But this hopefully opens up new options with what to do when it comes to making animated movies and not just, you know, doing one thing after another and just repeat the same thing. So that being said, The Bad Guys is a really good movie and I definitely recommend you guys check it out. And by that, I mean the Twitch chat if you haven't seen it yet. So it's been out for... Almost a month now? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, it's it's absolutely hilarious. Um, and I... Yes, I would even have kids watch it. They would have a good time watching it. Mm -hmm. They had some nice twists and turns and, you know, all that stuff. So, that being said... Wait, are we talking about the bad guys? Yeah, we're still mm -hmm. talking yeah. about that. No, I was going to say, there are no twists and turns to that movie. 
That was like a really easy movie. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I liked the ending though. Yeah, I liked that's... what they tried to go you, for. No, you can still like the ending, but like to say that, oh, this was an intelligent and brilliant no. <laughs> no. Okay, I wasn't gonna say intelligent. It certainly didn't have any twists or turns. Like, it's not in Britain for that. It is a generic movie as far as I'm concerned. It's just fun generic. Hey. But I, but everything was pretty predictable. So you, yeah, so you, but fun is still fun. So you predicted that the snake... I'm not saying it's not fun. Wait, Golden, yes? So you're saying yeah. that you predicted that the snake was planning a heist with the uh, main antagonist? It's pretty easy to figure out just by the fact that he's wearing the helmet and clearly doing something with it. Mm -hmm. You only need to devote like a second of thought to figure it out. Okay, well, please excuse my idiocy for my bad choice of words. No, it was just a differing opinion. All right. So I think we kind of exhausted ourselves here with the bad guys. So um, uh, we approach to another somewhat animated but live action type of movie. And that is uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. So this has been talked about a lot as of recently. Um, I still remember uh, seeing the trailers a few months back. And upon looking at it, I just see this as, okay. So I guess this is their answer for taking on the approach of making a Roger Rabbit type of universe where cartoon characters coexist. But you also have CGI, you have anime, you have stop motion and claymation. It's There's a variety there. And they even have... They even have puppet characters, like Muppets and stuff. And you just wonder... Yes, honey? Oh, thank you. And you just, I wonder... just wonder... I'm sorry? <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, I lost my train of thought now. So basically... Uh, puppet characters. Yeah, so uh, they also play into... It seemed like they are just making a uh, like some kind of meta-commentary about different forms of animation. Because you see that Dale went through the quote-unquote CGI surgery... And when I saw the oh, trailers, yeah, and like, and when I just looked at it again, I just have this gut feeling that what if this movie ends with Chip going through the CG surgery and everybody becomes CGI, telling the viewers to move on from 2D? I was afraid that they were going to take that route because for many years, I've, I've said more than enough of my fair share on how much I miss 2D animation. Um, and it, like, it would just feel like Chippendale would just be like the giant middle finger to people who miss 2D animation. And thank God they didn't. They didn't at all. They just played up jokes and they had a couple of jabs here and there from various animation styles, including the Uncanny Valley of some mm. of those like supposed CG realistic uh, type of characters. But the early 2000s, yeah. From the, from the Robert Zemeckis mo motion capture films like Polar Express. What are you looking at? Your dead eyes, mom. bro. <laughs> yeah, and I, I actually love that they took that approach while having some kind of a detective to uh, type of story where they're trying to investigate, and I'm just going to go ahead and give out spoiler warnings at this point. I think you all kind of, like, get the idea from here. So uh, the, big, the big story is, is that Chip and Dale are trying to look for, uh, what's his name, Monterey Jack, because he went missing, and we uh, we learned about this character named uh, Sweet Pete. I think that's his name, Sweet Pete? Sweet Pete. Yes. Yeah, Sweet Pete. And apparently, the twist here is that he's Peter Pan. He's, a, he's an adult Peter Pan. He's banking off of making bootleg films, and everybody knows how notorious bootlegs are. They've been around since, like, the 2000s or something like that. Maybe even longer than that. Longer than that. Um, longer than that. Appar Go ahead. Apparently, also, the story of um, Peter Pan in this movie, according to Joey, is somewhat based upon the voice actor for him in yeah. real life. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I what actually happened that. to him. I don't know how I feel about that part. <laughs> well, they did that a lot back then. Most of Hollywood did. It was just, you know, you're no longer of use to us. You've outlived your usefulness. We're throwing you away, basically. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know how I feel about that in relation to the movie. It's very shady behavior, and there's no doubt that it's understandable as to how that would, you know, come to an approach. I do like that uh, there were times when Chippendale tried to reason with P uh, P uh, Peter. You know, you might as well just say that at that point. Uh, they say, like, I know what that means. It feels lonely if you're rejected and everything. And we're supposed to have, like, some kind of soft moment. And, like, P 
Peter just decides to be a dick and turn things around, saying, you know, you guys are right. You guys are the worst actors in Hollywood. Completely <laughs> turning it on its head. And it does the same thing when, spoilers, uh, we have a detective named um, Chief Putty, I think his name was. Yeah, Chief yeah. Putty. G- yeah. Don't be reject. <laughs> yeah, so he's he's yeah. he's a claymated character who is voiced by uh, J.K. Simmons or G.K. Simmons? J.K. J.K. Simmons. Okay, yeah. Um, he turns out to be a twist villain who's working with Sweet Pete in uh, making all the bootleg movies because, hey, police. I'm just... Yes? The whole police chief is the villain um, <laughs> cliche. Yeah, and, like, up to that point, um, I do like that they had a scene where he's, like, he's analyzing something, he's got, like, a fingerprint, and he, like, cars it off of his hand. And that's only touching the surface. We have a scene where one of the police officers is trying to, well, a quote police officer. She's like off duty, but she's taken on uh, the clay, f- um, take on the chief. And the chief has a lot of creative ways of just fighting her. And you're like, he forms a spring, he wraps around her and just like body slams and everything. Yeah. Did you notice the uh, Terminator uh, the sound ter- effect? At- Oh, yeah, no, they, they reference T2 twice. Like, you first have a locked door, and he's, like, sliding through like he's the T-1000, yep. forms into himself. And no, you hear the... I do, just, do, 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 do. Go ahead, Andrew, right. uh, Peter. No, I, I love, though, on a, I also love that when it does find out who he is, he's, like, really unapologetic, or they don't put some, like, bullshit, like, oh, you you know you're better than this. He's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and it just ends right there, and they don't waste any more time on it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and... Like, we also have a second one where, a second reference to Terminator 2, where uh, he gets, um, he gets, he gets frozen by a fire extinguisher. And, like, we have a moment where, like, a part of his leg, like, breaks off, you know, kind of like what the T-1000 did when he was going through the, um, the, the liquid nitrogen. Yeah. So, like, we also, like, again, I also love that they had this open, like, creative world, kind of like Roger Rabbit with coexisting, like, fictional characters, uh, but the thing that also fascinates me about that is that they don't just have them there just for the purpose of, you know, being a part of Hollywood and working for movies. Like, they have, like, basic desk jobs or something like that. Like, they even have a police officer who's just an animated furry near the end of the movie. Um, I, I go, s- go ahead, Riley, you cut out they, there. They go to school. Yeah, they go to school. They even had a teacher who was an animated character, and I like that. I thought that was really cute and very interesting to, you know... Sorry. You were saying Dusk? Oh, no, the the cow um, teacher that they had, wasn't that, like... Uh, the, who was it? Annabelle? The, the one that was obsessed... Clarabelle, the Wait. one who was obsessed with uh, Goofy in well, all the cartoons. It looked like Clarabelle, but I, I don't know. She didn't quite have the, the same look as Clarabelle. It, it might have been just another dog... Or, I mean, also, uh, cow, cow, anim- yeah, cow animated character from like the pie eyed days. No worries. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, just my thoughts. So, um, Kitty, I'm pretty sure that you had fun watching this movie because we saw it. Oh like- my god, I screamed. <laughs> guys, yeah. I was watching it with Riley and Golden, and I ended up like, so I was like, is this this? this? Oh my god, I ended up like screaming. It she was, was great, and I prob- yeah. You were geeking out in a lot of scenes. Um, well, there was like so many like tiny Easter eggs. The smalls of Easter eggs were the biggest things, and the fucking ugly Sonic man. Oh yes, the ugly Sonic. Yeah. I remember like before the movie. Came, uh, I remember when before the movie came out, there was like a tweet mentioning something about ugly Sonic, and people are like, "Oh god, they're gonna bring him in here somewhere." And it turns out he actually like he becomes much more relevant to the plot of the He's movie. Integral to the I plot. I told you I was a part of the FBI. <laughs> the the what blows my mind. I know this is Disney because they're like a mega conglomerate corporation, so they can practically buy space if they freaking wanted to. But what really blows my mind is that they just got everything, like anything from like your childhood. They have it. You, you I, anything. Yeah. I'm- we were talking about this during while well, watching. It's like, how much did they pay in licensing for all these characters? Like, I know it's Disney, but for a Disney uh, well, Plus exclusive film, I, I don't know. I, I don't know like, if they had to pay that much. Considering, think of, think hard, long and hard for a minute. How many? How much of that they already own? For they that, own so, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say for that they would literally have to pay nothing. They already own it. 
Well, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, it feels like it's a lot to dump into for a Disney Plus exclusive, but I'm glad they did. But I'm also saying this. It is a Disney flick. There were probably companies fighting to have them feature them just for exposure. Uh, like, like, let's be real. If Disney doesn't make calls hoping Hasbro is going to pick up, Hasbro it would call them and beg them on their hands and knees to put their stuff in that movie. Oh, yeah. You know, as I think about it, you're kind of right, because back when I was thinking more back to Roger Rabbit's development and how they had to, like, make compromises with, like, Warner Brothers to have, like, Mickey and Bugs Bunny. Yeah, they said they wanted the to have time. an equal amount of screen but time with was, the Disney characters. But that yeah. was before, in, the, in, like, the 1980s, when Disney wasn't, like, as big yeah, on no. top as it T- is today. today if Disney yeah. drops the stick on the table, it's going to be bigger than yours. Yeah, exactly. Financially it, speaking. Exactly. They're going to have more say in the matter. Well, my question Significant is... girth. <laughs> you were saying, you were saying Kitty? Oh, my massive mighty dong. Um, <laughs> I, this brings the question because like, it was, it felt like a very Roger Rabbit movie. Like, I'm not going to lie. So does that mean I open the door for more possible similar films? Because if Disney goes down this route with a lot of like their licenses and shit, I'm like down for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Probably Sleeping Beauty is probably one of visually my favorite movie. Um, I just like it. The story kind of is bleh. I mean, bitch, like, dies, and then she gets, like, you know, creeped on by Phil. And, um, yeah. So, um, but if they go down this route, I- I'd be down to watch more. Because, like, I haven't watched a Disney film in years. I Like, I, I guess. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, no, you're sorry. Fine. Go ahead, Riley. Go ahead. Uh, stage. No, I was going to say, like, um... I, I guess my more cynical side of my brain is just like, yeah, the it's very shallow in its like references, but at the same time, I'm just like enjoying it as a fan of pop culture in general. Like it doesn't have like the 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 storyline, the story that Roger Rabbit has, but it, it it I enjoy it as a fan of pop culture. And like I, I will, I I was just like beer bean for just a bit simply because. But also, um, considering that Chip and Dale is being compared to Roger Rabbit a lot because of the type of universe that they invented, I still enjoyed watching Roger Rabbit more because I saw there was something a little more personal going on in that movie. Whereas Chip and Dale was just a giant, like, I wouldn't say satire, but definitely, like, a huge meta commentary of so. Go ahead. It was just mostly a pop culture thing with Roger Rabbit. It was like they, it was based off of of a book, I believe, or a it comic was, of some sort. It was very, very loosely based off of who censored Roger Rabbit. Um, yeah, who censored Roger Rabbit? But yeah. they had a main storyline. They and they knew how to utilize each of the animated characters for specific purposes, and they made sure that they seemed like they were interacting with the real world by having all kinds of different shadows when they bumped into things they would react all, all such things you can tell that there was a lot of passion going on in that like the way they just worked with that and that's not to say anything less about chippendale i like that chippendale yeah. was yeah. utilizing everything they had with cg 2d animation and even going as far as to sell shade uh at times and yes we can definitely tell apart like it's just sell uh cell shaded cgi compared to what is 2D animation, but they're trying to represent that. But there have been some legit uh, shots where there were, like, legit 2D animated characters just blending in the uh, the environment. Mm-hmm. But, I knew, like, like, well, you could tell there was just a lot of motion capture with some of the CG characters, like, um, cell shading, like, um, Sweet Pete with Will Arnett. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And basically just working with everything, including sock puppets. For police officers. <laughs> yes. That would be a lot. I love that guy. Yeah, that was funny. I love that. I loved when he popped up. It's mm-hmm. like when you watch Gumball and you see all these multi- multimedia and different art styles. Yeah, I brought up Gumball uh, yeah. when we first saw it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that one was, I, I do actually unironically like Gumball. Oh, I do too. Do you mean uh, like the amazing world of Gumball? or the, you, or, Yeah. Okay. Because I was there is no other. I don't know many other gumballs. Okay, because I got that mixed up with uh, what was uh, what was the name? Gumby. Uh, yeah. Um. No. No, I can understand the confusion. 
Yeah, Gumby. Yeah, that's right. But Gumby would be more like the the officer, the the law. Yeah, officer. yeah. No, yeah. I, I really like. Um, they literally call him Discount Gumby. <laughs> I love that. I love that Dollar Tree Gumby. Yeah, no, but I I will say this: I really love how you, uh, well used the um, the officer was, <clears throat> simply because of just his abilities of like forming everything. I thought that was quite a plot twist because when I was watching it, I was like. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Like I did not like I I will have to say that did throw me in for a loop. I was like, what do you mean it's the fucking officer? Like, bruh. <laughs> but it's too cliche. Also, is it just me or did Peter Pan look like he was the member of the fucking cartel? Cartel? I mean, that's kind of the point. Okay. Yeah, he's supposed to. I just I was surprised there was no long fingernails smoking that lovely cheese. No, yeah, he's almost literally the an he's the animation equivalent of a human trafficker, very explicitly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, with with cartel cheese, that was great. Oh, he's on the cheese, man. He's on the cheese. Oh no, I I, I speaking of cheese, I love that they use um the stinky cheese as a, like a metaphor of a drug addiction. Yeah. After the golden years, he ended up going on the stinky cheese. And then you got, like, this, uh... You know the the puppet reminds me of? That chef from fucking Muppets? I don't know if it was the same character. Well, no, it, it was very obviously supposed to be the chef from Muppets, because when he's, yeah. like, leaving them there, he's like, good luck, and then he, like, moves off, like, and sprouting the names of cheese. It sounds like the Swedish chef. Yeah. But yeah, or he has an accent until they ask for stuff, then he, like, shifts yeah. to, like, pure American. Yeah, and honestly... Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, no, and I think that was a very clever use where the characters are breaking character just to, you know, for the sake of showing, you know, just the reality and the environment that they're in, instead of just constantly sticking with their character even outside of it. Uh, for instance, Chippendale, I remember when I saw the trailers for it, um, and a lot of people were upset, saying, like, why don't they have those high-pitched uh, voices like they did before? And it only works whenever they're acting in character. In fact, at one point, yeah. the two of them are yeah. arguing at each other, and they get so aggressive that their their voices raise pitch. And I just well, like yeah. you were saying, Peter. They, well, they can afford to have a lot of these circle breaks in character because in this world, they're just actors playing in their shows. Yeah, and I, yep. and mm -hmm. I thought that was a clever move on that part. So mm -hmm. I also high pitched voices for a whole movie might be grating to a modern audience. Yeah, exactly. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Well, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Okay, I grew up with Alvin and the Chipmunks, and I never really found their voices annoying. I'll be okay. perfectly honest. I'm going to make a comment on this, Kitty, because yeah. this is actually something that I... Okay, research is the wrong term for it, but I looked into it. They specifically pitch voices higher for younger cartoons or cartoons aimed at a younger audience because they enjoy it more. It's specifically done. If you go back and watch stuff you watched as a kid you will generally find it too high-pitched. I tried to watch Sailor Moon, and I couldn't. It was or, too high-pitched. I tried to watch the old Pokemon, couldn't. It was too high-pitched. Or another one was um, Dexter. And, and Dexter, yes. Feel. Yeah, Dexter's voice is intolerably grating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I just have bad ears, I don't know. No, you don't have bad ears. It's just what you remember watching when you were a kid. And mm -hmm. Some people, like, even as an adult, like, you could still have a tolerance for high-pitched voices. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. So, don't take it personal when it comes to that. Oh, I'm not personal. I'm just like, huh, I wonder why I get that. You know? so have I mean, you I, watched I, some of the older cartoons recently, Kitty? Which one? Like, some of the old animes. Yeah. Um, Not too long ago, I did watch some old Sailor Moon that I found through YouTube, where it's, she's like, Oh, Darian! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you watch the old ones then. But, yeah. the my god. Yeah. The old dick job. <laughs> but overall, like, like I, uh, like, but overall to the Chippendale movie, like, when I were, like, I've already stated before about how, like, like, uh, what was it, cautious I was about it. I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I have ever expected. And seeing that there were, like, high ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, and of course Rotten Tomatoes always becomes, like, the big go-to example because they have harsher ratings, and when they get a very high rating, it implies maybe this movie is really good. But it's always important to take it with a pinch of salt. I was genuinely surprised with how it turned out. Um, the plot twist with uh, um, uh, Chef... Um, not Chef, Chief. Sorry. Chief... What was his name? Gummy? I don't know. Putty. 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 Sorry. Wow, I'm really doing horrible on this podcast. But no... 
No, you're fine. Chief Putty, Dude. like, I'm not too surprised that he was the uh, the twist villain. And it's not, like, not even, like, the beginning of the movie. I thought that it was, like, he was just there for, like, comedy's sake. But then Chip and Dale started to smell, like, an aroma of the cologne that Monterey, uh, Monterey Jack had. And they thought it would be, um, they thought it was... What's her name? Yeah, no, she was a good red herring. Yeah. Yeah, because, like... Because I thought it was her, too. Yeah, um, like, some of that was there, but I was like, you know... I don't think she uses cologne, and not to mention, they never mentioned before about her wearing cologne. Like, they never... Oh. Go ahead. Okay, so, Golden, I will say, that wasn't what set them off. Yeah. They, they smelled it around his office, Yeah. and because they figured he was inside the office, because that cologne gets on everything. So if they had... Like, if uh, the chief, or what's her name, had been around... Money. Now I forgot his name, Monterey Jack, thank you. Um, it would have rubbed off on them just by them being in proximity. That was the whole thing. And if they smelled it in his office, it means someone in that office had been around Monterey Jack after he had gone missing. Right. So, and, For instance, so golden like so sorry. My my point is I was not surprised that Chief Putty was the twist villain. Okay, that's fair. Because yeah. it would smell off of him, but it never smelled off of the the the, the lady her. the partner yeah yeah I have already forgotten her name yeah no I'm still yeah. trying to remember her name too like I don't hate the character you know she's just a really big fan of Chippendale and she wanted to pitch in and help out and she's your typical sidekick f- fanboy of the original ca- like uh, with the uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle type character and that kind of stuff I guess I, I, I haven't watched much of Rocky and Bullwinkle so I wouldn't know to grasp the example of it but. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just overall, I was genuinely surprised at how Chip and Dale handled, you know, putting this movie together. And, you know, for what I was worried of what the movie was going to result in was just my own catastrophic mindset of just expecting the worst out of something. Also fair, considering how certain things have been these days. Yeah, so I like much like what Kitty says. I do hope to see a few more of these type of movies. I just hope they don't overstay their welcome. Uh, well, go ahead. While we're while we're while we're still in the uh, spoilers territory, uh, should we get into the top the um topic of gadgets? Oh and- yeah. Okay. So this spiraled out of control. Um, you want to take it from here, Riley? I don't think I can do it justice. Any of you guys got this? I don't know what you're referring to. Gadget and there is a cock fly. Yeah, Gadget and that 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 little fly character got married and had kids. Yes, that was disturbing. That I that didn't sit right with me. Yeah, and then yay, the, they had abominations. <laughs> and the fly was voiced by the Allstate guy. Honestly, that part cracked me up. I was pretty cool with that. I loved it. Yeah, no, I I actually like that. Zipper was bo- was voiced by the Allstate guy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in good hands? <laughs> Are you in good hands? <laughs> it's just like just like, like gadget. That, that... <laughs> I mean, gadget back in the like day was like the big one of the furry baits for like millennials and Gen Xers, that, along with like Sally Acorn and of course like Rouge the Bat and that kind of shit. Yeah, and not like, that I know about. Okay, so. At one point, I had a. I also had like another suspicious feeling that Gadget was going to be written as like the twist villain instead. Which honestly, I was glad they didn't do that. However, I'm not going to deny that it is kind of disturbing that she took this route with the fly. But um, something else that's been on my mind lately is that some people on some websites are so pissed about this because they thought it ruined her character because of what their childhood, what they saw her as from a childhood perspective and that they were, furry bait. yeah, furry bait, um, sexual bait, you know, stuff like that. Disney, do you really think Disney meant to do that in the first place? Because when I, I, mean, I, I just saw her as a character who can work with gadgets and that she was cool mm-hmm. because well, she did that. Well, there's always, well, I think they know better nowadays because wasn't it Keyframe who told me about the American Dragon story? American Dragon story? Yeah, what is that? Uh, Basically, when the creator of American Dragon was coming on to Disney, 
they basically sat him down, showed him some uh, pictures yes. on the internet, and said, "This is what's going to happen with your characters." Oh wow! Just like no, that getting makes him, sense. just getting them ready. Just yeah, this is what's well, going to happen. So again, here's the thing: part of why that happens is Disney has really screwed up laws, like copyright laws, in that yep. anything that you make for Disney while you are no, anything you make, create, anything you create, even if it's on your own time while you work for Disney, belongs to them. Which is ironic in hindsight because, like, Mickey Mouse was created while Walt Disney was still at Universal. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh, the irony. So, th that's one of the reasons there's so much porn out there of Disney characters. It's because the people working at Disney created it. Because they're not allowed to do anything on their own. They don't want to accidentally create something awesome and then have someone else own it for all eternity. Understandable. Understandable. But long story short, the idea that people were so um, excited about, you know, what, what the character Gadget was written as over the years and seeing this, this particular rabbit hole they would put her in, that's a fault of the people. Because when Disney made the character, her character was just contribute as just part of the Rescue Rangers. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that they completely ignore sex appeal or anything like that, or any major company for that matter, because you also have, um, I mean, you have Sally Acorn, you know, made by, you know, the animators who made Sonic Sat AM, and you also had uh, Space Jam when Warner Brothers wrote um, Lola, Lola Boy. Uh, yeah, Lola. Lola Bunny. And oh boy, that got, uh, that got a lot of attention. Um, yeah. It's just, it's how people just want to use it in their own imagination and just bring it to the public. That's their own decision. That's not something that, you know, the companies, you know, tend to inspire or bring in. It's uh, they just wanted to do that because of other reasons. I'm shooting myself in the foot here, aren't I? Fine. Oh, you're fine. So it's a it's an interesting topic that um I I still don't know how to feel about that overall. I'm I'm getting more accepting of the fact that they're not supposed to be the same characters from the show. Yeah. So, but the the, the point is, and people are just like because uh, like some people are just refusing to see the movie simply because how they wrote Gadget in that sense. Okay, but that's like, okay, you're shooting your own foot off. This is your favorite character finally on screen for the first time in ages, and you don't want to see it because you don't like how they wrote her. It's just like... That's your own fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's the point I was making. Yeah. But just still, give this movie a chance. It's available on Disney+. Plus, um, and, uh, like, how much does Disney Plus even cost? Like seven ninety nine dollars a month or something. That's fairly cheap. It, yeah, hundred and something for the for the year. Okay, yeah, like that's that's still that's still cheaper than Paramount Plus. Like I run Paramount Plus, or I have a Paramount Plus account. And yep. and yes, I I will get to that part in a bit, but um yeah, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Uh, the movie was a lot of fun, a lot better than I expected. Check it out. I recommend it. I'm pretty sure you guys would say the same thing. You also recommend it. Oh yeah, yes. it's fun. 100%. All right. Yes. So, um, I think this is... Pizza. Very you fun, got yeah. old. <laughs> so, anyway, I think it's time we verge into a two-way segment of how to and how not to adapt a video game. And we're starting off with Sonic the Hedgehog that came out back in early April. Now, Riley and I have actually seen this one. Joey has seen it. I'm pretty sure that a lot of... Uh, like, I'm guessing the rest of you haven't seen that. I don't know if you saw the first Sonic movie. If you haven't, that's I saw the first one, not the second one. I don't mind spoilers, so, okay. but I won't comment much. All probably. right, I have not seen anything. All right, so I will. I will lay down as this: Sonic the Hedgehog and the sequel are one of the very few, very few exceptions of when it comes to adapting a video game and making it legitimately entertaining. Um, and I would want to say that it is something that even like neutral viewers would find entertaining. Like you don't have to play the games to understand it. But I know that Sonic has become an existing type of character and a franchise that it's not for everybody. And you know what? That's fine. And I say that while the uh, like waves are like completely losing their minds here. Um, I think there's a bit of feedback coming off on somebody's end. But anyway, the... Um... Oh, is there feedback coming off me? Oh, it's gone now. 
<laughs> that was weird. Anyway, mystery. But yeah, um, but everybody knows about the first Sonic movie, um, and it, it's a, it's a cute movie. It's it's a, it looks like your typical road trip type of story that is adapted from a cartoon character. You know that sort of idea or direction. But it was done with a little bit more effort put into it. In fact, everybody remembers like because obviously you know Chip and Dale kind of brought that up. But but the old uh, Sonic design and how hideous it was, and everybody took an issue with it. And without hesitation, the company went to the trouble of redesigning it, even though it did cost them uh, their own company to make this real. But it's them, you know, quote unquote, dying for your sins. And I put those in a, a silly metaphor right there. But uh, the first Sonic movie was cute. Um, but for Sonic 2, it definitely has more of the actual Sonic the Hedgehog game feel. In that you have Sonic, you have Tails, you have Knuckles, and they go through a series of hijinks back and forth. And I'm just going to say right off the bat, I really love this movie. This, I, I felt like a kid watching it. I was on the edge of my seat, just geeking out over any characters who made their appearances. I see Tails coming in, and I'm really excited. I see Knuckles coming in, I'm really excited. And even, um, even the ending part of the movie, which I'm just going to put a pin on for now, uh, Riley, um... I'm going to let you take the floor on this one. Um, as far as being a Sonic fan, I admit I didn't really get into the games until the uh, Adventure series. Mm -hmm. and, well, it was all down there, downhill from there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as far as adaptations go, I, I definitely kind of prefer this to the first one. It, it was just so much more fun. And Oh, Jim. Jim. Oh, I envy you. You must have had so much fun in that role. Oh, he did. He did, absolutely. And I still remember when it came to the first trailer and he's playing Robotnik and he looks quite different from what we usually do. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, was it even possible to try to replicate a realistic down-to-earth sort of Dr. Robotnik sort of thing? And then I saw the ending trailer to that. This movie embraces everything that we remember Eggman as. That I forgot he was... Egg, uh, that he was... Um, that it was Jim well, Carrey. Go ahead. If you really pay attention to the first movie, it really is. It's weirdly enough, like it's Jim Carrey becoming Eggman because he literally has his voice at the end of the movie. Yeah. And then this is just the completed transformation. But if you do pay attention to the first movie, you see him slowly turn into the Eggman of the games. But he starts out as Jim Carrey, which makes it kind of amusing. It's amusing, and I also find that very clever to try to make him feel like the Robotnik character the, that fans would identify without making it too, like, on the nose or anything like that. Well, In this it's cool because it allows Jim Carrey to be Jim Carrey, but it also yeah. allows him to also be Eggman in a way that's believable to an audience. And also to see him change himself that quickly on camera and do it so well is also just adds to the movie. So you can tell there was a lot of heart put into this movie. Like the developers really wanted to make this fun for a lot of people who enjoy the movies. <clears throat> and I would still want to support that because this is one of the few occasions where film producers will actually listen to the people. I mean, if they're going to go and change the design of Sonic, they're certainly going to listen to a lot of other things. Case in point, um, people wanted the uh, the actress who voiced Tails to be na uh, her name to be on the front cover, which yeah, calling the fantasy. Yeah, and while I do think that it's kind of pushing it, I do like that they're actually listening to people. There, it seems like the developers of this movie were connecting with the audience and how much they love it, and it turned out to be an extremely fun movie. Definitely. A Wait, go ahead. Oh, sorry, question. Why wasn't her name on the front cover? Because voice actor versus, like, big-time Hollywood actor, that kind of thing. Yeah. Really sucks. I mean, yeah. she, if she may... Did she not play, a, like, a big character in the movie? Yeah, I, that, like, that, no, that, no, was no. Reasons, that was one of the reasons why people wanted her in the credits, because she was playing one of the main cast. Yeah. So. And absolutely, she should have been. Yeah, and I'm glad that they actually do that. So this actually shows that, you know, filmmakers like this... Gives me hope, and I do hope that, you know, other companies or other, like, uh, production teams will actually listen to what the people want and have a connection with them so that we, we can get a very fun result of what we want and what their intentions are and have a nice in-between or a middle ground that actually becomes a very satisfying result. 
it's I, it's, I, I find that to be such a rarity. Go ahead, Riley. I, I like how they adapted some of the plot points from the games into the story, like bringing in gun and that whole aspect. Oh my so God. We'll yeah. That. You know what? I better put the spoiler warning on this point. Um, Oh, uh, and then just like you're, you're seeing the breadcrumbs from the series. I, I, I like. I love how that one scene when Sonic is underwater with the uh, air bubble. Yeah, and he yeah he dove underwater to save Knuckles, and then he tried to like get his way out, but he couldn't swim. Which fun fact, um, in development, the the creator for Sonic, he he did not know that hedgehogs could. Actually, <coughs> ouch. Yeah, they actually like. Oh, that sorry, I thought it was muted. No, you're fine. Anyway. The, uh, he, the creator did not know that hedgehogs could actually swim in the water until after the game was made. Oops. A big oops. Wow. So, <laughs> <not a no. laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> so, yeah, that happened. Um, and then we should probably talk about Knuckles himself, Idris Elba. Oh, yeah, no, I still remember. Like, I still look back at when we were reacting to the Game Awards because I was ecstatic and waiting for, like, the Sonic 2 trailer. Like, come on, give us something. Um, finally coming in, Vlad is losing his marbles, going, yeah, Knuckles! Mm. It, it, it shows, like, it, it's it, it's such a long way from what originally started with the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie in that, first off, I didn't even think that a Sonic live-action movie would ever work. It just, it would, I don't know what kind of, like, what kind of source material are you going to work with? He's a cartoon character. And surprisingly, they managed to make it work, and... Seeing how far it went from this idea of a live-action Sonic movie to this ugly design that nobody liked to changing it and seeing the final result and then coming to the sequel and having the big feel of what a Sonic uh, movie would feel from the games, it's it's amazing that we that this movie came such a long past. So there's a lot of personal weight to it just on that account. Um, and go ahead, Riley. It's probably one of the best Sonic things since Sonic Mania. Not gonna lie. Yeah, actually, I think one of the uh, the designers of Sonic Mania worked with the design of um, the redesign of Sonic. I could be wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't if he was involved uh, if he wasn't involved with the ending credit scenes where they do it all in the sprite art. Oh yeah, no, that's absolutely amazing. So yeah, uh, so diving into other spoiler territory here. Um, I'm trying to remember because like I've known about this movie for a while I like I'm, I'm remembering various moments more than like the actual plot but uh yeah Gun was introduced and Gun was introduced at a time when Sonic and Tails crashed into the wedding which was shown in one of the uh the trailers by the way the way that segment was actually written out uh, written in is that James Marsden's character uh Wachowski um actually had like Don't a know, Lord. Yeah, he accidentally had like the wrong ring, and he had to tell um, he had to interrupt his uh, sister-in-law. Yeah, and just like say like uh, I need to see that ring or something like that. Like he could have just said like oh I got like uh, separate rings mixed up or something like that. Um, but no, like he he had to fight his way to get the other ring that would actually become a portal. Like don't put it on yet, cause I I don't know what I don't know what to imagine if like they put it in. Cause by the way. Uh, in working with the source material, they throw one of those rings, and it's a portal. And I think that was a good way yeah. of justifying uh, the existence of rings. Because in the Sonic games, you collect rings, and it becomes it kind of becomes your life source. And you collect a hundred rings yeah. to get an extra life. It's 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 a different twist on trying to bank off of a Mario platformer. Uh, but th- like, I like that they worked with that. Oh, um, it's like I like how they adapted that. Like there were some different adaptations, like how the Chaos Emeralds work in general. Mm-hmm. Like instead of there being the one Master Emerald and then the seven Chaos Emeralds, it's the seven Chaos Emeralds, but you merge them together to create the Master Emerald. And that I was okay with, because yeah. regardless of whether or not they would become a, like a single entity or not. It's still an important source of um, an extraordinarily big power of some kind. How much are you willing to bet that in Sonic 3, which I've been hearing has been getting greenlit, it's going to be about everybody trying to find the Seven Chaos Emeralds or something like that. Like something happened to the Master Emerald, and they would have to travel around the world. 
Well, since we're we we should probably take that on when we get to more of the spoilers. <laughs> I've already got the spoilers up. So at the end of the movie, um, Shadow the Hedgehog was announced. And yes, my my. Go ahead, Riley. My my inner my inner twelve year old. No. <laughs> I, I, I still remember being 11, 12 years old and getting into my big Sonic phase because of Shadow of the fucking Hedgehog, where I was obsessed with all things red and black and edgy and... Oh, uh, my That's why start. you became a gamer. Uh, yes, that was... <laughs> but no, like even, like, even when I was in the theater, I've heard people cheering like, Yeah, Shadow! So... Yes, it, same. I was like, No! No! <laughs> The way you're giving your reactions, like, the way you're giving your reactions, are like fading out. You're like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Everybody in the theater, I the still remember. Distortion is perfect. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I still remember going to see the movie a second time with like Lux and Kichi and the others, and Lux just losing her shit at the ending, and it was just, I, it, it's a great moment to be a Sonic fan for once in the past what 15 years or so because you're seeing these adaptations that really like play into a love for the series oh shall magical star i still like i looked at clips like i was very happy to see it but like like when i first saw when i saw the first sonic movie i did look at clips and people were cheering of tales appearance like yeah my boy's here it's 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 really adorable on how much like the Sonic fans can really enjoy the movie, um, but the better question is is how well it does a job for neutral viewers. Like if you do want to watch these sequels, you would still technically have to watch the first movie because it otherwise just feels a little off that you have a cartoon character living in somebody's house. But it's, go ahead. Well, hasn't it been beating the box office like it, it beat fucking Morbius? But that's not really much to that's, say. That's 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 not even like, dude. You can make. I don't know. You can make like the cheapest B movie possible and outdo Morbius. Did that bad, huh? Well, it's just basically Jared Leto has been destroying himself, and it's his own problem. It's his own fault. So so far, Sonic Two has made almost four bi- four hundred billion four hundred million dollars. Sorry, not four hundred billion. Sorry, four hundred million dollars. Wow, it's as if you know if filmmakers actually listen to what people want and actually what they prefer, or you know if they listen to criticisms, they can make a better product. And you know you're actually I earning. So. Yeah, like this <laughs> is honestly for how much they made, they earned it. The reception they had, they earned it. This, to me, is an example of making a good game adaptation because you're listening to what the people um, are giving their opinions of, what they're suggesting, what they want to see, mixing it together to find the right uh, spots that would work with them but also work as just good writing in general or just good filmmaking in general. This movie was Mm -hmm. not meant to be like top-notch, state-of-the-art storytelling. Its basic plot is... You have a threatening character who's trying to go for a particular artifact. It's it's so done by the numbers. But they embrace it. They make some hilarious moments, even like including some pop culture references, which even for me, when I've heard like Sonic make so many different references, I was laughing more than I should. For instance, I like the scene where he gets rescued by Tails when he first encounters uh, Knuckles. And as he's in the uh, passenger seat, he's like, what is going on? Robotnik's back? And who is... Who is Clifford the Big Red Rage Monster? <laughs> like, I had a good shock over hearing that. I do, like, I do like what they did with Knuckles in this movie. Like, they, they did, like, a very Drax the Destroyer thing where he takes things very liter- literal and he's very ignorant on things. Yeah, like, they have, a, like, a somewhat ignorance to it, but not with the, Ill, like, ill intent. Like, he's just, he, it's yeah. his own way of trying to adapt to Earth and just the way the humans are compared to where he grew up in. Well, he was a warrior. He was trained as a warrior as a kid, and he didn't really know how to act any other different. So, yeah, like, it, it's a justification of how he develops. Also, like, when he goes to grab uh, Sonic's arm as, like, when he comes to the, the exceptions of being a companion with Sonic, he grabs it and it's like, ow, 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 are you kidding me right now? Because his knuckles are so powerful, he can, like, he can twist, like, he can twist your arm without any effort. Oh, it was a mm-hmm. whole thing where he thought like shaking hands was like crushing your friend's 
pants. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, <gasps> you mean every teenage boy ever? <laughs> I guess so. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> but no, like also, it, Anne, you are still muted. E, thank you. But long story short, Sonic 2 is a very good example of how you make a good game adaptation. What isn't a oh, like what isn't a good example of a game adaptation is something that I am just going to um I, I wanted to save this for last because we're gonna be here a while. If we're ready for the big one. Halo. Uh have you poked Solar recently? Because he is yes. awake. He yes. he hasn't been responding lately. Um he just posted in the chat. Oh, right. He literally just posted okay. five minutes ago. All right, yeah, so I'm gonna bring him. in. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bring him in, and I'm gonna see if I can get Vlad in. Because um, I want to get your guys. Because my knowledge of the lore is somewhat limited. So I. I, I would as like soon that. as he gets in here, I am. I am turning him down. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, that's what I have on that. I have yearned. Yes. We ask for your presence. Brothers, join me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, long story short, this Halo show is complete garbage. And I don't have to say that. In fact, Bro brother, speak of the devil. Join Solar. me. We were talking about the Yeah, everybody, give it up for Solar. He has quite a lot to say about Halo. I better turn you down just in case. Jesus Christ. It, it, Jesus Christ, indeed. So, brother, where should we uh, start? All right. So, uh, when you imagine Halo, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Obviously, Bungie's games, uh, which they did not even play. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They proudly stated they didn't say. They yeah, didn't they play. stated it proudly. Like, we don't have to play. No, yeah, the game. I remember that. Mm. Um, no, no. Bless you. So, um, yeah, it, that was a trick question because no matter what your answer was, uh, Paramount was bound to disappoint you. Like, their take on Halo is so completely horrendously pants on head stupid. <laughs> like, it, it is so poorly written and conceived, not even like as its own separate entity. Because I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's a silver timeline. It's not canon. It's not the main timeline. That doesn't First matter. Off, this is an insult to the main timeline to begin with. And mm -hmm. second off, even if it is its own fucking thing, it's terribly written anyways. It, it doesn't matter that it's bad Halo. It's just bad fucking sci-fi in general. It's just... it's contrived. It's like, fucking terrible. For instance, the bullets only kill aliens when the chief is shooting them. But it doesn't work they from anybody else. They, you, no, that's, that's what I just said. They like doom guide Master Chief. Bullets only kill Covenant when he is using them. It's, mm. Yeah, because, like, so fucking first off, like, the first episode, we start off with, like, a bunch of fucking backwater insurrectionists on some shitty fucking desert planet that are, like, it's mining supposed water to be magical. Hydrogen. And it isn't, it already isn't the original Madrigal because Madrigal was um, a mostly, like, Latin America, its culture was based on Latin America, for the Wait, most part. And so, we start off on Discount Tatooine? Yeah, yeah they made Discount like, Tatooine, even though what it was supposed to be was, like, some cool futuristic Latin America. And they also made the rubble, which was kind of a really cool fucking thing, but, okay, I guess they didn't now. Oh, and it was more advanced in the book, too. It didn't have any of this, like, cable car bullshit. So they already got that wrong. Yeah, we're watching these fucking insurrectionists fucking piss around. The Covenant show up. Uh, they fucking... They're getting their fucking ass blasted, right? And it, it's really funny because they set up this fucking ambush, right? Like, they, all the fucking little human soldiers with their fucking space AKs and fucking battle rifles and shit like that all just fucking line up. In front of this gate, and they're like, "All right, fucking get ready to shoot them when they come in." Uh, uh, uh. And then the fucking doors blow open. There's the dude fucking sitting on a chain gun that immediately just starts laying into the fucking elites, and he might as well just be sh shooting spitballs at him the entire fucking time because it does absolutely yeah. fucking nothing. Right? Spitballs, right? And then the fucking right? Spartans show up, and fucking they they start kicking ass, and they're like, "Uh, they fucking they're doing their shit." It turned into Power Rangers. It literally turned into Power Rangers with a with a couple guns. A guy literally throws away his gun 
to like use a pipe as a javelin. Oh my! Remember that part yeah, against a fucking elite, which is a uh, yeah, really fucking stupid. Like even if you're out of ammo, that's just fucking dumb. Why would you fucking throw away your firearm and pick up a fucking pipe? Or better at, why don't you have a fucking backup gun? Which you were, you're a fucking Spartan, so you should. Yeah. Anyways, fucking, uh, they go, they fucking kick, they kick everybody's fucking ass, and then fucking Chief sees the exact same turret that the fucking first guy was using, right? The one that was doing fucking nothing. He's like, alright, fucking stay there. And he picks up the turret, and now, magically, as he is using this fucking turret, uh, now it is suddenly just absolutely fucking shredding them. He might as well, he might as well just be firing, like, fucking... He's got the doom guy. Fucking cord rounds. <laughs> He's got that doom guy effect going on. Bullets don't w kill mm -hmm. demons unless just, doom guy is shooting them. Bullets just, don't just, shoot. <laughs> Wait, guns don't kill demons. I kill demons. Is that yeah, what mine is? That's basically that's basically doom guy. He kills demons, and apparently the rules apply to Master Chief in this universe. Bullets don't kill aliens unless the chief is shooting them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I you, gotta be a, you gotta be a Spartan because you you see you see when the gun fires, uh, you actually just don't absorb any recoil whatsoever, and and that recoil actually gets transferred back in, into the bullets. Need, that, that's what makes the bullets go faster. No, I'm fucking with you. They you need uh, uh, shitty writing. You need uh, Alpha Sigma energy that power the bullets in Future Land. Future Land. <laughs> but yeah, basically. And on top of that, they basically just character assassinate every Everyone. cool character from the fucking series. No character that is, like, in this series is the same way that they are depicted in the canon, in the books, in the games, <sighs> whatever. The only one they got right to any, like, measurable degree was Cortana. And Chief just treats her like shit the entire fucking yeah. game. Like, like, he, he and then she the gets... Yeah. And then she gets cucked yeah, inside her own fucking Spartan's head. Jesus Christ, that's like, <laughs> yeah. like fucking nine steps ahead. Like and it's were, literally with an enemy. And she gets to watch. It's just... It's just, it's just oh yeah, yeah, by the way, we're not fucking exaggerating. That is not a fucking yeah, exaggeration. Master, Master Chief, Chief literally fucks in this series. Because, yeah... Yeah, fucking! I need sex in my Halo games, guys. Duh. That's what I. That's what I play. Right for. in point, front of Master Cortana. Cheeks over here, yeah, th this, clapping them cheeks. At this point, you might as well like. First off, he doesn't even deserve to be called Master Chief because he takes off his helmet a few times too many. What is the total do run time of him with the helmet many? on? Yes, you could you could probably count it on like fucking single digits. Yeah, Probably. no, like, cause just, like, <sighs> like, literally at the end of the first fucking episode, he takes his helmet off, and they, like, literally they tried to do the same shit as they did in the fucking Mandalorian, but without any of the shit that made the Mandalorian cool, like, the fucking mystique to it, like, the fucking, there, there, there's none of the, there's none of the fucking charm to it, there's none of that yeah, like, mysteriousness to it, like, there's no, there's, like, that's one of the core elements of Halo. It's like that theme of discovery and like not quite knowing what exactly you're He has a sense of mystery behind until it. Until it's on top of well, it. Well, there's also the fact that you could tell someone about what Master Chief was doing or thinking just by his body movements. And they, they completely abandoned that and just said, oh, face, oh, face. And even then, his face wasn't really all that expressive. Like, I get it. He's slowly coming back to know his humanity, but at the same time, it's just like, I just, uh, you didn't earn it. Like, do we even need this kind of plot thread? Because the way Master Chief was written is that, yeah, his childhood was robbed, but he really doesn't take a personal. He's just ready to take in some action, and that's what he's going to do for the rest of his life. I mean, yeah, he's basically, he's basically like, well... Fuck, the deed's already done, and I'm already kind of a fucking badass. So I might as well keep doing what I'm fucking doing. And here I he's am like, kind oh, of you needed. You kidnapped me, and you fucking lied to me. It's like, yeah, but bro, you're literally like the fucking best bet for fucking command. Speaking of which, they really do not give a shit about the covenant until like the last fucking two yeah, episodes. Yeah, it's like we only see them in yeah. one episode. Yeah. Not take the covenant yeah. seriously. We barely at all. see them. Yeah, it's just like, what is this? Like, this isn't even Halo anymore. This is just a fan fiction. Because like in the fucking war, the UNSC is getting the the fucking shit kicked out of them by the covenant. They're fucking like they are they are fighting their hearts out, but they are getting their fucking ass beat. 
because I the wonder... government has fucking superior technology and advanced tactics and fucking like all kinds of fucking crazy shit like that. I wonder and... how much of it was for like budget reasons. Yes. It, we had 90 fucking million for this series. Oh, yeah, and look oh, at the damn. CGI based on that budget. Holy hell. And, like, like how does like, that compare? I know that, like, okay, it's not, wait, it's not it's a exactly reference. fucking 90 million is in, like, 10 million per episode because you gotta fucking put in production costs and fucking, like, everybody's gotta get their wages and all that shit. But still, it's 90 fucking million. Wait, I wanna how point this out. Up? Less mm-hmm. than... Uh, Forward into Dawn, which was actually good, had like less than a tenth of that. Ooh. Yeah, but it had someone, something more. It had passion. It had yes. heart. It had effort. How it had much, someone who actually loved the, the fucking, series. Yeah. How much was fucking Halo Landfall? I wonder how much that cost to produce. Oh, that, oh, that was like really that. It was actually much much lower than you probably think it was. Yeah. Like yeah, I think because, they, use, I think the people in it were cosplayers. Actually, they just had really accurate cosplays, so they were put in the movie. Yeah, exactly. And like, they, don't, you don't give a shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, as far as seeing live action de- depictions of the Halo armor and Spartan armor and stuff like that, and the vehicles and stuff, that is that is awesome. That is top notch. I mean, it's too doable. bad we don't ever get to see it fucking used in action, except yeah. for like three times. It's especially too yeah. bad that we never got the Peter Jackson movie that who wanted to make this movie. Oh, I just want to point out one other thing. Um, of all the things that they did, they tried to do, like, diversity changes when they didn't have to, and of all the things that you could have done to, like, if you really wanted, like, diverse protagonists, why don't you just bring back everyone's favorite fucking character, Johnson? Yeah. yeah he's just not fucking here. He's not here, but he, yet he has always consistently been the most popular Halo character. Everyone loves Johnson, and they didn't because bring back Johnson. Badass. Here's, here's, like yeah. no Johnson, here's, no Arbiter. Here's the thing that really bothers me. Like, okay, you could make this into a series. Like, you could try to work as much as you want with it. Why couldn't they, instead of having this quote-unquote take place before the first game... Why not just adapt the first game and then just slowly start to expose bits and pieces of who Master Chief is? You could have made that work! You had a story right there! You had so many fucking stories to choose from, and even, even, even if you didn't want to use them, there were still so many ways you could have fucking dove into the fucking canon. You could literally just make your own fucking Spartan team, which you literally have already done three quarters of. There is no reason for Chief to be in this fucking team. Like, literally make it any other fucking Spartan that's not Chief, and I doubt that anybody would actually give a shit. It's the fact that they make Chief this fucking overly emotional fucking bitch of a character. (laughs) So, hold on, just a a question, because I'm not very familiar. Okay, go ahead, Dusk. I'm not very familiar with... Um, Halo. Um, so are all of them, for lack of a better term, as I understand it, uh, Master Chief is asexual. Like he's not interested in sex. Yeah, at all. he is a or like. So books, is that with all it's, of it's, them? No, well, no, it's it's one of those no, things where no, no, no. it's like a like, side. It's like it's kind of like a side effect of mm-hmm. a possible side effect of them it becoming is a potential side effect. Master effect. Chief happens to have had it, although there are instances of Spartan Two's. Um, later retiring, getting married, and having kids. Mm -hmm. In fact, the one who tested Mark VI armor was a female Spartan who was retired and had kids. Okay. And a husband. So, if they had done this show, called it Halo, and not put Master Chief in, could they have made this movie about, like, any other Spartan and said this is what a Spartan could go through and that, like, held yeah, Master Chief as, like, this I mean, legendary something in the background? No, they could have easily... No, they really could have easily done that because, um... There were... T- Spartans could be given private designations and there were only two that were... I know this sounds like... It's more of an action movie kind of designation, but it's, like, only two were ever designated as hyper-lethal and Chief was considered to be lucky. I put it in air quotes because that's it's sometimes described as like a slight metaphysical thing. There are slight metaphysical things that all about Halo, and the concept of luck is one of them. Um, so um, he could actually legitimately be a legendary guy in the background, and to some people he is. Um, there are other Spartans who have sometimes filled this role. Like they could have easily made a really, like a really good one if they want to go like Ghost of Onyx about like Kurt, because everybody loves Kurt. 
but you only know about him if you read the books. The problem is, is that Master Chief is kind of the, the face of the franchise, and they probably knew that a lot of people weren't going to give a shit no. about. Right, no, no, but no, no. they didn't know anything at all, dude. They didn't do any yeah, research. Yeah, they didn't I, I know. Even play I'm, the games. I know. I'm not. I'm not being charitable to them at all. I'm. I'm just saying. No, I don't, I don't. But I'm just saying this isn't a good example to cite that on because these are people who explicitly never did any research. Oh, I know. I'm. I'm not saying that as far as like to defend it. I'm saying that as far as the general public goes, like if you're huh. looking for just the normies and stuff like that, Master Chief is kind of the 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 main character for the series, and they're going to be more interested in seeing if they find out, oh, he's the one who's at the Actually, no, dude. Re- Reach is considered one of the most successful games, and that doesn't have the chief in it at all. Yeah, ODST oh, is also rapidly successful. Really, oh, Halo 5 is the only counterexample, but that's because the characters were kind of shit. And so is the story. I'm, I'm just going to point out, I feel like anybody that knows what Halo is would be able to recognize what a Spartan looks like, regardless of whether it's chief or not. You would know, probably I'm, recognize a Spartan in armor, even if it's not necessarily Chief. Yeah. Like, I'm not defending the logic that they're using. I'm just saying that's probably the logic they're using by having Chief be the main character. No, I don't think that works, because Reach was Reach and ODST were way too successful. But again, these are people who didn't play the games and are trying to basically look for a normal, normie audience. I still don't buy that because they also put way too much emphasis on the uh, Rebel Girl, who has right. no relevance to the series at all. Wait, 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 wait. More emotional significance is placed on her, and more of the plot is centered around her than it is Chief or indeed any normal canon character. Yeah, we never needed this bitch of a character to begin with. So like, literally I would buy that argument, Riley, really if she wasn't in if she wasn't in the series, I'd buy that, but she is in the series. If they gave a shit about marketing, she would not be there. Mm. Yeah, like fucking Literally, you could remove her entire arc and lose nothing of value. Exactly. It would add to the series. It would add to the series. In the most legitimate fucking way possible. Because her arc literally, it it, it accomplishes nothing. Like, the Covenant is literally going around beating humanity's ass and fucking glassing people from orbit and all this fucking shit. And she's like, ah, my fucking deuterium farm on my shitty fucking rip-off Tatooine planet. Well, as we've (laughs) already established... As we've kind of already established with these writers, they don't give a shit about the lore of the games really all that much. I'm j- again, I'm not saying that to defend well, no, no, it. You, you, not- no, 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 you, you weren't saying it to defend it, but you did say, well, for marketing reasons, they had to stick with Chief. But then again, for the same reasons, they went with a character that wasn't Chief. Right. Well, they, they, we're, just saying, we're just saying the original argument that you put forth was an argument of that. Well, again, th- this is probably what I meant to say all along. I-, I have a difficulty expressing myself, but this is kind of the logic that they're using. I- again, these writers aren't into the series. They don't care. All they see is Master Chief and Big all this money. stuff. And they like, yeah, all we want to do is, oh, this is our version. Yeah, yeah no, but I'm, I'm saying that, like, I don't... The version sucks. Yeah, we I, don't, I still don't buy that because they put emphasis on a character that wasn't like, marketable I, I, at all I, from I, that perspective. That's that's what I'm saying. I just want to just add on here, like, uh, the argument is, like, the argument being that, oh, we, this is just our version. Okay, first of all, your version sucks, and second, nobody on this fucking planet asked for that. Not, literally Nobody asked for maybe, a whole different spin. Maybe one person that actually likes Quan. Yeah, no, like, literally, when I was, like, thinking of, like, an adaptation of Halo, I just thought, I, I, this could just be me naive and just how little faith do I have with filmmakers. But, like, this is, this, like... Okay, my knowledge on Halo is very, very minimal, but even then, I couldn't even see this as quote-unquote Halo. It didn't feel like Halo. They had, like, the opening action scene where, you know, the Spartans come in to fight the Covenant, but after that, it just, there's no connection. It doesn't feel like a much, I will say this much, from a perspective like my own, who is more towards the general public, I've, every episode, I don't know if you guys heard me snoring or not, I tried to stay awake. This is one of the most boring shows I have ever watched. 
Because all they do is talk about really fucking shitty armchair philosophy. Yeah, and it's, it's just... It's like 90% of the fucking dialogue is like, Oh, we captured fucking children and made them fucking the, the only hope for humanity. Is that right for us they're, to they're, do? They're I trying really, to twist... Yeah, we're like the same as the Covenant at that point. Huh? They're, they're making this stupid plot twist of just, Oh, you're using children to make them like fighting weapons or something like that. Which has been so done to death before that it's not interesting. Like, if you want to make something like that, make a movie about, what's his name, Connie 2012 or something. Okay, we didn't ask for that shit. Coney. Coney, yeah. I remember that was a big phenomenon Coney. back then. Fucking Coney 2012. Yeah. Like, just... Just go make a movie about that. Okay, don't bring it's, that into Halo. It's just, it's just really... It's really disappointing because when we did get to the action scenes, they were actually quite competent. They were, like, well yeah. choreographed. The last, they had, like, the last had, episode. They, like, yeah. flowed together really nicely. Like, they were... Oh, they, yeah, they were, like, for real. They big, like, sweeping camera shots that weren't, like... There wasn't, like, an over-reliance on jump cuts and, like, fucking shaky camera. There were, like, these grand, like, sweeping camera motions yeah, getting all the even, action. It was good. They even included, like, like a few shots that were, like... For, they even included a few first-person, like, shots. Like, this implies that they could have made this... Fin- they could have made this fantastic. They knew that they could they could have made this good. But they didn't. It's honestly, I think they just took whatever the fuck they could spew out of their ass, slap the Halo title on it, and call it a day. And keep honestly, in mind, I feel like it's a fucking, I feel like it's a fucking money laundering scheme at this point. Yeah, it is <laughs> because, like, Cause like, because, like, this is Jesus Christ. we've waited for nearly, no, not even nearly, over like ten 90, years. You had ninety million bucks, and that wasn't enough to cover ten episodes, so they had to fucking cut it down to nine episodes. So they already fucking, they were already saving money. And you're telling me that it wasn't that enough what, to produce this. What it amounts to is like, a, what, what is it? It's like six of those episodes being nothing but long, boring fucking exposition vomit filler arcs it, that very God, loosely dude. like connect plot points. Like, oh, like, like the only thing is like, oh, the, the, we have the keystone and it makes you fucking see visions and like fucking EMP shit. And like, she has, she has the other keystone and like, oh, I have been saying this. The same. It's like. It's just, it's just like, dude, just fucking, just, just put some fucking grunts on the screen and just start popping heads. All right, I feel, <laughs> I've been. We don't. It, it makes shit so much fucking simpler. Yeah, no. It when so it comes, we've seen that. It's the do fucking action. Yeah, and this was and like that's what we're here for. I will. I will literally say this. Okay, so I, I, I will get this out of the way. You know, just throw a grunt on there. Watch that. We saw that shit at the last episode, which is something that I've already repeated before. Like they could have made this series good. Second. I've been saying this for literally years in yep. regards to game adaptations. If you're going to adapt something, adapt it. Follow the source material. It's not that fucking hard. You have a, like a lot. You pretty much are given an answer sheet, and instead of answering that, you're just writing your own answers because you want to have your own creativity. If you want your own creativity, well, then write your own goddamn story. To play devil's advocate, and this isn't a defense for the show at all, when it comes to adapting a game versus a movie, there is some, like, growing pains and stuff to be had, but th- that's no excuse for what's going on with this what show. What kind of growing pains? I'm curious. Like, well, there, some are some ad- experiences, there are some experiences in a game that don't quite translate well okay, to and, yeah, and that's fair. medium. And that's fair, but, like... From a storytelling perspective, you could find ways around it. I like. I th- think a lot of us are just. Ex- we become very, very acceptable to what's the term? Like a few artistic liberties, because we already know that when it comes to translating from any sort of medium, there are some pros and cons to each one. For example, book adaptations. Um, you have montage sequences. Books cannot describe that, but books can describe so much emotion that someone's feeling, but that cannot be described by a single shot. Of someone's expression, it could just be happy or sad, and they can try to renown, um, present it as much as possible, showing that actions speak louder than words. But it's not on the same thing that a book can. So I already know that there's a few little challenges here and there that they can't work with. So, that, like one of the things that always irritates me is that with Halo, it already had a story. Some argue that. If you try to if you try to just follow what the story is, it would just be predictable because everybody played the game. First of all, no, not everybody has played it. 
Second, maybe the people who love the games would want to see that happen because they maybe they want to re-experience it in a somewhat different fashion, along with the general audience who wants to understand what the source material is. So again, you just follow the source material. Thirdly, see, so thirdly, like, there are some people that are like, ah, you just want you just want the fucking you just want the series to just perfectly reflect the story of the first game. That's what uh, an adaptation yes, is. The first game was better written. It's, I know it may be a go ahead. I know it may be a minor nitpick as well, but like during the action sequence, one thing that bothered me is they like they would never, almost never, until the last episode, steal the Covenant weapons. And I'm just like, you have jackals with energy swords. There's like five or six of them. You're not gonna take one of those. Yeah, yeah really. really. You've you've been seeing that shit fucking chop through shit like a fucking lightsaber, and you're not gonna be like, damn, that shit might be useful. The fuck. So like like I said. I understand that there are certain limitations. Like, if people are going to, like, have this argument that you're just expecting a carbon copy of what the game was and then just, oh, play the game instead. Okay, genius. Harry Potter followed closely to the stories. Lord of the Rings followed closely to the mm. stories of the books. And yes, they had their changes and they had to have their liberties. Are you going to say that they're boring, predictable carbon copies? No! They were cultural impacts in the 2000s. And what does that say for all the Stephen King adaptations? Just follow the source material. It's not that fucking hard. And also, I will go back and play the games. You know why? Because I can modify the difficulty settings for a different experience. No matter how many times I watch Halo, it will still be shit, though. Or just in general, you just want to relive the experience. <laughs> how long was this series in development? Like, nine or ten years at least? Like, we've it's heard of that... a year per episode, and yeah, this is we've what we got. Yeah, we've heard this for literally, like, nine to ten years... And before then, I remember hearing that Peter Jackson was going to make a movie of it, but it got turned down because companies were afraid of it being way too expensive to produce. But you can see how much it costs to make the Halo series. It takes effort. Well, here's the thing, too, about using Peter Jackson. Like, when it came to the Lord of the Rings movies, Lord of the Rings was once said to be an unfilmable series, like Dune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they still made it work. Yep. So my point is, if people are going to complain about how predictable it is because of what it was before, it's been done before, and they were actually big successes because they were sticking with what made it good in the first place. That's why you stick with the source material. It's, I, I'm repeating myself at this point. The thing that also disappoints me, and it's a part of me is not like, a part of me is not too surprising here. Part of the production team involved Amblin. Amblin. Yeah. The same company is- who made E.T., Back to the Future, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Saving Fucking Private Ryan. They can make Spielberg really good... Production. Yes, yeah. That is a company that's been around for almost 40 years. They should know better than this. And they, they fucked them, yeah, they fuck themselves hard on this one. And as of the oh. 2010s, I haven't been that impressed with their movies anyway, so, which is why I'm not too surprising. But at the same time, I'm still like, what? They were involved with this? Wait, hold on. Were they hired to help on this? Well, I mean, like... Or were Steven they in Spielberg, charge of this? Well, Steven Spielberg was involved with the series, like, all the way back to, like, 2012, 2013, because he was... I still remember the Xbox One reveal, where he came out during a segment to talk about how he was excited to be working on the Halo series in some form or another. So he has been involved with this creation since, like, almost the beginning. Oh, poor Steve. It drove you mad, didn't it? Have you touched this fucking tainted mess? You see, I, I thought they knew better. But at the same time, like, even then, like, a couple of the recent Amblin movies haven't been, like, that impressive with me. Um, I remember when they brought the Amblin logo back from Super 8, and I was excited for it, but I wasn't impressed with it because the story was just so questionable. But it made a lot of right. money because it banked off of nostalgia. Jurassic World came along, and I fucking skipped that because I would have been pissed off watching it. Um. So, again... Back to my question. This this studio, I don't remember the name. I'm sorry. Amblin. Um, Amblin. Amblin. So, Amblin was um, in charge of this, or was hired to help. They were involved in its production. They weren't okay, like. But again, but, 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 or, involved. Or, I don't know if they were the involved. Leader. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, involved means that they were hired to do something. They have to do what they're told in that case, whether that's good or bad. If you have a good director, you can. Ha- do good stuff. If you have one who's giving you, like, shit to work with, there's only so much you can do. 
if mm. you have one that's a talentless hack, yeah, you're kind of fucked. Exactly. Yeah. So, again, it's the same thing that I have this issue with people, you know, blaming Hayden Christensen and Kristen Stewart for bad acting oh, yeah. when they okay. were given bad directing. Yeah, I'm not going to oh, yeah. go point of blame with them. And j by the way, despite how terrible these characters were written, I'm not going to go blaming the actor who played as Master Cheeks. And yes, I said Master Cheeks. Or whoever, cheeks. yeah, or whoever <laughs> played, cheeks. or whoever played any other actor, including Quan Ha. I'm not going to go blame the actress for that. Yeah. she was just doing her job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. the writers who did I do, such I just, a garbage job. I, I just want to say, I'm, if by some chance the actress that played Quan Ha is reading this, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry that you had to portray that shit character. Jesus Christ! That yeah, for real. I, I like that. Okay, Genuinely. I don't want to say, like, the, the whole as a society, but I feel like... I feel like part of... Many parts of fandoms are getting better about that, like, not blaming people for the characters they portray. I know there's still a lot of people who do it, which is unfortunate. But, like, for example, I know the kid who played um, Anakin Skywalker in the first... Oh, Jake uh, Lloyd, yeah. Oh, we saw what happened to he, that. Yeah, he got bullied mm. a lot, the poor kid. Like, he was just a kid doing... His job. Like, what he was told. Yeah. Uh, Hayden Christensen, at his point, was a teenager slash adult, so he can take it, but, like... And yes, we all know that kid actors were not generally great, because they don't have any experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, Jake Lloyd, uh, what happened to him was I, tragic. Yeah, that was yeah. very tragic. Okay, so I've looked up, um, looked up the production list. Okay, so the production companies are... Showtime Networks, 343 Industries, Amblin Television, Chapter 11, and One Big Picture. Did, did, did 343, like, look at this at all? Probably yes. not. Actually, no. Like, it, like, Sorry for interrupting. No, something that really, really boils it down to. The co-founder of Ho uh, Halo did not approve of this show. Oh. Now Wasn't we know it, what. Like, the original creator of Master Chief himself? Oh. Yeah. God, that's got to be really hard, but at least he can, you know, look at the fan it's reaction and realize to his boy. His boy. Look at my massacre, my boy. <laughs> Literally. But like, at least, at least he sees the fan reaction because I, I have yet to meet a fan who enjoys this. It, I don't think they exist. I, I, I haven't I've met seen, too many people who enjoy I've it. Seen, if you enjoy this, you are not a fan of Halo. You have no experience <laughs> of what Halo is. And I'm not even saying that to be an asshole. You are probably somebody that has actually never played Halo, and you're just like, right, oh, this is kind of cool. Okay, yeah, you're so probably just a sci-fi fan. Halo, you're like, you're, you're just sitting there, just, 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 just crying, humiliating. Okay, so uh, yeah. looking at the ex uh, executive producers the top of the list is steven spielberg along with stephen king oh. kiki stephen kane sorry uh kiki wolf Ki i can't pronounce that sorry for butchering the name kiki wolf kill <laughs> that's literally her name that is literally yeah. her Bonnie name Ross, kiki wolf kill. That's, name, that's, 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 that's a pretty it's a pretty metal name yeah that is a pretty metal name um uh, just a bunch of other names but also like but <sighs> trying to retract what i was originally talking about um just i i ha okay now I remember i have read a couple of youtube comments where they said that they liked the show but they also agreed they didn't like kwan ha but again i'm not going to put any blame on the actress or any of the actors who played their roles i yeah again it's it's writing and i just the people her character didn't really seem to really factor into the story at all i remember her you could literally, you could literally take her out, and nothing would change the story. Like, what was it, episode seven, where it was completely Quan focused? And it was I did not so get boring whatsoever. No, if there was anything, yeah, okay. So literally. I'm gonna label. I'm gonna label. I'm gonna name two things that out of the entire series I took enjoyment of. One, when she was cuffed to a motorcycle and she's trying to like break the cuffs free with a bunch of boulders that she could get her hands on. And from mm. a top viewpoint, she's throwing, she's wobbling her body around like a child. Going, ah! Ah! And I keep I'm laughing sorry, my I'm ass sorry. off of that. Golden, Golden, you can't make that comparison. I've seen children who behave better. Yeah, no, like, I, I just <laughs> find that hilarious. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I've seen. And two... When she is in whatever this vision is that she drank that water out of, and she goes to take a Master Chief itself, like, a oh, bitch, you're not going to stand a chance. And guess what? Pow! She gets knocked out. Pow! She gets knocked out again. Multiple times. 
and it's just amusing. <laughs> yeah, even <laughs> not even in your dreams, kid. <laughs> yeah, no, the one there is something that she does that it's kind of bullshit about where it's like, okay, there's that the the black Spartan with a mutant arm, and I'm just like, if he was ever a Spartan too, like the sheer requirements just to even qualify for one are just like, yeah, no one is capable of sneaking up on you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really stupid because she fucking sneaks up on him by covering herself in fucking dirt. dirt. That, 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 that'll fucking, that, that'll, that'll fool him. Oh, yeah. That, that would, that'll, that'll no, no, if you even read the sword. books, that wouldn't even fool, like, a, like the 14-year-old Master Chief would have been able to sniff that out. Yeah, like, oh, here's From a better question. Fucking Fajad here's a better... be able to fucking he... sniff that out, and he has Parkinson's. I have a better yes. question. So, yeah. like, obviously, like, Juan Ha snuck out from hiding underneath, like, a blanket of dirt. The other, uh, the other Spartan, I forgot his name, but he has a family. How the fuck did he get back to the Astro Field and home with his family? Yeah, they, they just fucking completely glossed over that shit. Like, literally the last place we saw him was him lying face down in the desert after being fucking, uh, tasered, tortured yeah. for, I'm like, just, fucking which... five minutes. By the way, the fucking taser sticks they have don't actually tase people. They just fucking hurt it's just a stick that gives you bone hurting juice for no reason. it doesn't actually incapacitate you it just fucking burns like shit what the so fuck like, so yeah like literally they just fucking take it and they just jab it into them and just fucking hold it in there and just like burn their fucking skin and shit so like everybody that's been fucking burned like that just has that fucking scar so yeah Soren literally Gets fucking tased in the back of the head by Quan <laughs> because she covered herself up with dirt because somehow Soren doesn't see that or like hear her fucking like coming out of the dirt to fucking tase him. Gets left in the desert with a fucking motorcycle that has already broken down, which is why it was there in the first fucking place. And then literally in like the next fucking episode within like the first 10 minutes, it's just it cuts back to the fucking the rubble and he's just there just like, ah, oh, yeah, fucking uh, I'm going to tell I'm going to talk about my fucking bounty hunt stories. And like, Bro, what? How the fuck did you not only did you not have a ride on the fucking planet? You didn't have a ride this space. You want you want a fucking asteroid, my guy. How would you get there? Yeah, really? Like there is no explanation whatsoever. Like, uh, like, are they just going to assume that because, like, are they going to have us assume that because he's a Spartan, he would have no problem getting through that? Like, it, even Spartans can be challenged with what comes in their way. Yeah, especially if you're saying that this one got fucking snuck up on by Quan. You're telling me that he's <laughs> suddenly badass enough to just make it back without any explanation? Needed? She no, would no, I'm wish. I need some to explanation, be. my guy. Yeah, she would wish he were badass. No. She isn't. She's a joke. Just it, it gets it, it's it's really fucking stupid because they they keep they keep sitting here like so like Soren like continuously wears his fucking Spartan armor everywhere just to show off the fact that he used to be a fucking Spartan, but apparently he just really kind of sucked. Yeah, because yeah. He, is just, he is like utterly incompetent in pretty much every fucking way. Like, literally, there's an assassin, like, in the fucking building that they're in that's, like, trying to fucking kill Quan that, like, like literally just killed somebody else. Soren's, like, three feet away, and he pulls this fucking, like, 20 fucking 46 cowboy space revolver out and tries to fucking, <laughs> tries to fucking shoot her. Misses, like, every single shot except for one, which, like, grazes her arm, and she, like, jumps out the fucking window and escapes. And literally, like, God, what episode was that? Like, fucking... Five, I think. I don't fucking know. It's like two episodes later. Fucking there's there's a fucking shootout that's going on, and he's like involved. Like he and Quan are like fighting off all the fucking fucking Ventures guys, and he's suddenly just fucking nailing every single shot. Now he's just like fucking headshot, headshot, fucking three rounds in that guy's chest. Fucking grab this guy, fucking use him to shield from the bullets and fucking throw him into this other guy and then fucking shoot his head. And I'm just sitting here going like, okay, so if he can fucking dome like all fucking six of these guys in like five seconds, how did he fucking miss this bitch that was three feet in front of him with every single shot? You are, you, do you expect me to believe that she's that fucking fast that she can just fucking weave in between the bullets like that? How the... It's just, it's just like shit in this series happens because the story needs to progress forward. 
and not because the story is well written. No, yeah, no. Like, I, I, I still remember one of the moments is that, like, right after, like, Master Chief takes off his helmet, or John, I'm just gonna call him John at this point and not Master Yeah, it's just Chief's, John. Chief, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I still remember at one point, he, well, like, he wanted to, like, explore the home where he grew up in. Like, he puts his helmet on, drives the warthog to the house, when as soon as, as soon as he gets off, he takes off his helmet. I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like, literally, it was less than, like, it was less than, like, a minute. It was, like, 40 seconds at yeah, most. Yeah, I can, Go there ahead, were so ahead. many times where I was just, I, I, I kept saying out loud, put on your fucking helmet. Yeah, I was literally, I was just sitting there having Vietnam flashbacks of Halo 2 on Larry yeah. because or like, cat. The, the, the jackal snipers are just sitting there fucking, like, just, like, licking their lips. Bueno. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking uh, the jackal sniper that's killed me for the 56,000th time as I peek my head around the corner for exactly one picosecond. Right. Hippity hoppity, your brain is my property. <laughs> I mean, hippity as far as hoppity, your brain is splattered on the property. <laughs> so we don't care about spoilers for this whole thing, right? We've. Dude, I we've just, literally been fucking spoiling this entire. Yeah, thing. no, I, I just want to say, I, do I just, do, I don't even care if I put the spoiler tag on here. Long story short, don't watch this. Even from a stand, even from a neutral standpoint, don't watch this movie because it's just not. I'm sorry, series. I'm used to say movie a lot. Don't oh, okay, watch this a, series. Here's a, here's a fucking here, here's a fucking spoiler. So, at what episode do you think? Okay, so nobody nobody answer this. This is for the audience. At what point? At what episode do you think they actually reach the halo? They reach the fucking halo rings. Just, 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 just go on. Just like type your answers out in the chat. Let's let, let's see. Yeah, because like there hasn't. The been, chat. Yeah, because the chat hasn't been very active lately. They've probably just been sitting there like eating popcorn. I'm just. I'm just hmm. I will say. I'm just curious. I'm I will curious say this much. See how many of you have actually fucking watched it. I will. Or, or I like just are waiting for our opinion. Wait, yeah. I guess, yes, Golden. I will say this much. Um. Like, before I got started on the podcast, somebody was asking me, who's actually in the chat, by the way, I told them that, well, like, yeah, we're going to tear into Halo. And he said, like, dude, I only made it to, like, two episodes, and I was done. So, it's <laughs> understandable. <laughs> That's, that's, I, I will, that's actually a funny answer. That is I a one funny-ass answer. Go ahead. When it comes to, the like, the plot line, I'm seeing what they're trying to set up. As far, like again, my knowledge of the Halo lore is very limited. Like I started playing the main series games from Reach onward when I started getting back into first person shooters. And I, I have replayed a bit, but at the same time, the whole thing about Cortana taking over Master Chief's body, I'm wondering if in this future series they're gonna have it that oh yeah, he's been back the whole time or back we just didn't know it because he was just going full into chief mode or something. I, I, don't know, I maybe I, maybe that's a stretch. It that that is I I honestly think that is a stretch, and I'm not saying this on your behalf. You know, I'm not yeah. trying to you know devalue your opinion or anything like that. But if they actually do go this route, I just think that's a sloppy route to go because there's like I based mean this on, fucking whole route's been sloppy already. I mean yeah, sloppy yeah. Yeah. yeah, really. But like it because as as we mentioned before, Master Chief was just somebody who's like okay, my childhood was robbed, but. Hey, I'm this badass, so I'm just going to embrace being this, you know, heavy duty soldier to take on anything against it's, the company. It's God, he, he's basically, basically just like, yeah, I understand what this whole thing is fucked up. At the same time, I'm the best chance humanity has. But also, uh, split jawed bastards are about to fucking uh, hit us with the uh, intercontinental pesticide from orbit. So uh, that's pre that's pretty important. I should focus on that. That's a, <laughs> that's a pretty jarring issue. Which, mm. by the way, they, they, they absolutely, like, do not fucking acknowledge until, like, episode 8 or fucking 9. Yeah, when they oh, fucking glassing. sit there. Yeah, when they're, like, the Covenant are just like, alright, you know what, fuck this glass of planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wait. Here's the thing, they don't even fucking glass a planet that we've actually visited on the fucking series. They just fucking glass some random fuck off planet in the middle of nowhere uh. with a city full of people that we don't give a shit about. No, no, so they're, the they're trying to do Alderaan, but in Alderaan places. No, 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 but here's the other thing too. Um, although 
I know I'm going to sound like a lord. The Covenant usually did it. There's some side lore that says it usually took a lot of effort for them to, like, totally glass the planet. So they had to, like, really, really fucking mean it if they did it. And also there couldn't be any artifacts on the ground because it was heresy to destroy Forerunner artifacts. So they usually had to, like, make an effort to search them, which is why they bothered with round battles at all. Um, they fucking had, like, the elite zealot recon teams. <laughs> yeah, and if they knew that, like, an artifact was or might be on there, they would not do that just willy-nilly. Um, yeah, but the other thing is that by this point in the war, they would know what a fucking glassing is, because it would have happened at least a couple dozen times by that point. What did y'all think of what they did with Halsey by the end of the show? I mean, it's about that's not Halsey. Part. Honestly, I don't it's about fucking part care for the course for the rest of this fucking series. Yeah, honestly, I don't fucking care. Like it was the yeah, like us spoiling without even giving a spoiler warning. Long story short, don't watch the show. Just don't bother watching it. <laughs> if you like, if you enjoy Halo, you will not enjoy this fucking series. If you if you just like, enjoy it... watching sci-fi in general, it's just not worth a watch. Good. I really. <sighs> Like Cortana, I, I, as Cortana's much as I, like the only fucking accurate character. In she's my opinion, the, yeah, she is one. one they, they actually got Jen Taylor to fucking do her voice, which thank God, that's oh, yeah. one fucking saving grace. And uh, you, you can tell that you can tell that she's the only authentic character because every other character treats her like shit. <laughs> yeah, and it's like her whole dynamic with Chief in the series is just like she got cocked. She got literally. literally right in front of her. She's she just got looked- to fucking watch. And she's and a fucking like, AI, so she's like fucking, she's like watching it breaking down like the fucking fluid dynamics running all kinds of fucking like <laughs> background processes and shit. And I just can't help but imagine the Cortana from Halo 4 and their whole dynamic in that game, and I'm just like... Nope. Uh, <laughs> it, it's painful. It's painful. So I th- that was the one redeeming thing about Halo Four was Cortana and Chief's like relationship. Like the multiplayer was okay, but the relationship between that between Cortana and Master Chief was pretty good in that game. So uh, by this point, I think we've said more than enough of our fair share of Halo. Like we've we've rightfully beaten this shit down so hard like obviously we're not the only ones talking about it it's been all over the internet like some ordinary gamers talked about it critical oh boy critical said it really best under 10 minutes of what's wrong with the halo show and that's only like a few sh- like a few what a few episodes like a few videos sorry a few videos elaborating what was so wrong with halo <laughs> somebody actually tried to argue with him saying that it's a good show or that he likes uh they like the show and he's just like, oh, okay, that's like your opinion. I mean, look, if you fucking like it for whatever reason, cool, that's on you. That doesn't make it a good show or necessarily well written because it's it's really it's really fucking not. Yeah, it no, isn't. it's it's just. I'm, I'm I'm sorry to break it to you. It's so it's just a sloppy sci-fi garbage. Like, I, I I feel like what happened. Was oh. like this studio wanted to do like a sci-fi show, but they but like their fucking like their parent company was essentially like oh but we got the Halo license so we ought to fucking use it so listen you guys got to make a fucking Halo show so they're just like ah oh, fine we'll make a Halo show but they just fucking made their own shit and just kind of slapped the Halo decal over it and called it a day because that's really what it fucking feels like it really feels like somebody it it feels like baby's first sci-fi because like there's there's just a lot of fucking amateurish like writing just just there's a lot of just amateur writing period all around it really it's just it's just like the only good parts are the action scenes and out of nine episodes there's like maybe a combined there's like three fight scenes or four. There's maybe a combined total of like fucking ten minutes of footage, <laughs> maybe a little bit fucking more than that, of where they actually like fight and shit. Maybe I'll be maybe like fifteen to twenty, but still, it's nine fucking episodes, and you're telling me that like less than one episode's worth of action is all that we get 
in a Halo series, which is based off of a first-person shooter, which was all about making very fast, tactically sound decisions in order to quickly and efficiently take out the enemy. And like, here's the other thing, too. Like, fucking, you're, you're gonna sit here and tell me, like, oh, we need to fucking have a human touch to this. First off, you don't no, need you that. Don't. No, it's you Halo. don't. Yeah. It's Halo. You can... The, the, you could fucking be a Spartan. You could even fucking do it from the fucking elite side. That'd actually be kind of cool. Like fucking seeing Halo from the fucking Covenant's perspective in the fucking early days. That'd be kind of fucking neato. Or if you must insist on having a fucking human element, uh, how about from like the fucking 3,000 fucking background guys you had marching in the background? How about you fucking include some Marines? Why, why, the, why the fuck not just use those? Because that would have made a lot more fucking sense. To be following around like a squad of marines, and there's like fucking one or two Spartans that is just like with them. Here's a better that question. That would be like a way more interesting group dynamic because they would have something in common in the sense that, oh, yeah, um, the Covenant's gonna fucking uh, absolutely kick the shit out of us. So I'm gonna need you to watch my back uh, so I can fucking shoot this guy without getting my fucking sides melted off with plasma. Alright, cool. Mm. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah. God. It would make more fucking sense. I mean, it would just, be a honestly, two. it would just be a better fucking experience because we wouldn't have to deal with Quan. Yeah, just. I'll be right back. Hold on. All right, you go ahead. Just, just require better. Maybe all the fucking time that was spent on Quan could be spent better elsewhere. Yeah, really. Like, on shit that actually fucking matters. You know what you said about, like, spending, like, focusing on, like, the different soldiers and everything? Dude, has any, have, I'm pretty, I'm, I would guess you guys have, but have any of you seen Halo Legends? Yeah. It's been a while, but yeah. God, they, they had much more passion in that one compared yes. to this. I mean, I, I, I love the duel, the one with the, the Covenant, where they have, like, some kind of painting sort of, uh, cell shade sort of CGI to it. Like, that's so much more articulate and more that's entertaining than what this show has. It's... Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yep. I think... Disappointing! Yeah, no, this it, it's just complete hot garbage. And at this point, I, I think we're, we've kind of, like, exhausted literally anything possible on what Halo has done. I think we just... I, it doesn't even deserve to be called Halo at this point. Long story short, just don't it's, watch it. It's, it's not Halo. Yeah, it's, it's not. Literally, it's it's not Halo. You know, at it's, this point, I just call it not Halo. That's the best way to summarize Paramount Plus's Halo. Just it's just call it not Halo. Slap not on. Better there. yet, yeah. Better Halo. Yet, just just call it. Just call it no Halo, because, uh, <laughs> trick question, actually, uh, the Halo ring does not actually appear in this fucking season at all, period. Yeah. You get, like, fucking drawings of it, and that's all you get. Like, literally, they couldn't even fucking be asked to do the cliche where, like, the fucking ship comes over the horizon, and they're like, Chief, you're gonna need to see this. And, like, they see the fucking Halo ring in the distance. Literally, they could have done that, and at least fucking put that in there, but they didn't even fucking do that. Like the Halo ring, the Halo installation does not fucking appear. The only time, the only so, time so, so, there's so, something similar to know. that is when they touch the that that artifact and like John is like transferred there along with that Covenant spy. Like that's the only time. Yeah, we see who he something. fucks, by the way. That's the that's, that, that's yeah. the person he fucks. Yeah, no, yeah. like I remember, we a lot of people got upset at that. We saw that and we're just like, good grief. Chief. Literally, literally, people called it from the fucking start that, like, when she showed up, she was either gonna be some stupid shit, like, oh, she's fucking, like, chief's sister, or they were just gonna end up fucking. And, uh, yeah, they ended oh, up Oh, was that the one with the weird outfit who gets naked almost immediately? Yeah. 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 Ah, gotcha. She's the one with the fucking energy sword fingernail, which, by the way, she, like, fucking Jeez. rips that shit out. That's pretty graphic. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, that was just, like, yeah, like ouch. And by that the way, yeah, Chief she worked just to fucking, the term fingering. She, hmm. Like she was like asleep in the in the bed, like fucking like ten feet away from her, while she is just yelling and ripping her fingernail out, and he does not wake up at all. Like this does not give a single fuck. There's just like there's just a lot of small shit like that too. Like that that is technically a minor nitpick. It doesn't really fucking matter that much in the Pardon context me, of the story. But there are just <laughs> so many of those like little fucking tiny things. 
to where it's like you can clearly see props of like actual authentic weapons in the background. You can see like fucking like battle rifles on racks and shit. But when people pull out guns, they pull out like fucking spaced AKs and fucking Tokarevs and shit like that. It's like, dude, like what fucking year does this take place in? How the fuck is that technology even still relevant? At this point, you have props of battle rifles back there. I can literally see them in this shot. Why don't you just fucking use those if you have them? <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's like, what do you, what do you, where did you fucking spend the money? Where did you put 90, where'd you put fucking 90 million? Where, where did it go? Where did the 90 million go? Like, you fucking, what happened? How did you get to this point? Yep, yeah, so... I think I'm ready to get to the Q&A. Yeah. We'd probably about time. <laughs> so, but just, yeah, no, like, just, we we definitely set our piece on it more than enough. But, yeah. No, we have a right to, you know, say our piece on the matter, and, oh boy. It's, uh, we have to wait a little bit before the questions come in, so I have to fill in the void here before we get any questions, because... Delays happen whenever it comes to sweet <laughs> streaming from, you know, what's going on here to what is transferred on Twitch. <gasps> uh, uh, pardon me. Bless you. <laughs> Apparently that's a sneeze to you. No. Same idea. <laughs> Body function. sound gets bless you. Uh, I still love uh, uh. I still love one of the older moments when I was, uh, like, game streaming. Uh, what was it? Pokemon Yellow. And Bliss was in there going, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and just just lots out a big hick, and we just all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ask Golden. Uh, have you been watching the Tell Your Tell shorts? No, I haven't. I watched two of them. Yes, yeah. I've watched a few of them. I just haven't got around to it because there's just been a lot of other stuff happening. Yeah, I I am going to say bearing in mind that MLP Gen 4 got better over time. I'm keeping that in yeah. mind. Yeah. Let's just say that. Angel of Speed, have any of you seen Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Um I nope. I heard it was nope. I've heard some things about it. I know that Sam um, Raimi I saw it. it. How was it? Um It's a good spectacle. <laughs> But, um, without spoiling everything, um, everyone is out of characters, so the plot can happen. Oh. Oh, that doesn't sound familiar. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Oh, and, um, I'll say it's a Doctor Strange movie in heavy air quotes. <laughs> oh, That's dear. all I'll say. I would oh, rant more, especially if Vlad was here, because me and him saw it, and there was one scene that we have a rant chambered about. Oh wait, for Multiverse of Madness? Yeah. I my my thoughts on that movie are mixed. I, no, I like the it. only thing I really enjoyed about it was the spectacle, and there were one or two moments where it seemed like it was gonna go somewhere interesting, but it either um it either has the conclusion of like most of the conclusions for the stuff it brings up are kind of wet farts. There are a few cool yeah. Like, and it's especially because they, like I said, they got everyone out of character just to make the plot happen. There is one cool fight scene where the spectacle in it is the fight, um, in, like, the coolest way possible. But it's, n you, you get the sense that it's not even against anyone important, which is kind of disappointing. <laughs> Oh. I, I well, I like that you can tell uh, during some parts that it was directed by Sam Raimi. It w was nice to see some of his Raimiisms and that, and the of course the certain cameo that's in all of his movies. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you did see it? Yeah, I did. I saw it with okay. Joey. Yeah. If only Vlad was here, me and him could. There's one scene me and him would like totally be having hilarious comments on right now. <laughs> uh, so the next question. Um, Ask all, if you could spend a day in any of the movies and shows we talked about for a day, which one, why, and what would you do? Bad guys. Be furry. <laughs> bad guys. <laughs> yeah, bad guys. Bad guys. Be, be furry. furry. That is Wait, my answer. So, yeah. What was, the, what was the question? Sorry. Oh, sorry. If no, you the, could, the question. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. If you could spend a day in any of the movies or shows we talked about for a day, which one, why, and what would you do? 
Okay, hold on. I have one question for clarification. Does it have to remain um, show accurate? For example, if you were in the Halo, does that mean you're in bad Halo? No, thank you. Fucking nightmare. <laughs> no, yeah. I no. Uh, I go to Halo just so the moment the fucking John takes his helmet off, I shoot him in his dumb fucking face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think. Uh, and, then, okay. and then everybody else in that fucking facility because they're all incompetent retards. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I, I think I would go with the uh, Rescue Rangers one, just because. Oh, okay, like, fair. Fair, yeah. yeah. You get to interact with all these characters from your childhood or throughout also you pop can still culture. Be a furry, so it works. <laughs> well, you, yeah, yeah, there you go. What are you gonna do when you run into Ugly Sonic? <laughs> <laughs> run away. Just go. Just run. Yeah. Well, well, just go where Jessica's going, because yeah. What would you do when you run into? Ask him if he has the director's cut of the first movie. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Oh my god. god, Sonic cut. Better, here's the yeah, question, what would Sonic. you do if you stumbled upon Chief Putty? <laughs> Just Chief Putty, man. <laughs> Just run. Um, see if I can make him in some pottery. <laughs> just, I just imagine that one scene from Ghost. <laughs> oh, magical star that would go gay for uh, for Mr. Wolf. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, he does have a very interesting voice, I will give him that. Yeah, he does. Like, very charismatic. Mm-hmm. Alright, or Sonic, uh, Sonic Movie 2 and hang out with Sonic's family. Yeah, but... You would run into a lot of trouble. There's also the stupidity with the gun. Uh, I feel like I would be fairly useless. Yeah. Like, out of all being the most human, I see Sonic 2 as me being the most human and therefore, like... Useless? Yeah. Alright, um, ask all, have you seen Moon Knight? No, I haven't. I've seen the first episode, but I haven't checked the rest out yet. Now that's the one with uh, Oscar Isaac? Yeah. Okay. Random bullshit, go! <laughs> God. You know, we should wash out the taste sometime this week by playing some Halo together. Yeah, maybe. some more fire team <laughs> F up. Yeah. I like how we've been cursing. No, I've, I've liked how we've been cursing it. this entire time, and you just went for F up. Yeah, no, let's, after this, after the stream, let's do it. Yeah, sure. Yee. Let's go ahead and just, like, nice. let's go kill some grunts, and let's go, like, try not to stick on the back of warthogs. My apologies. Right. Phoenix Nest? Uh, sure. Well, we're, we're still continuing with the podcast. Yee. But yeah, like, after, soon, after soon. the podcast is over, yeah. But, um, uh, I hear a knock at the door. She's not Here's Cosmic Prissy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to wait on one more question and then we'll start to wrap things up. All right. Yeah. Ask Golden, what's the least favorite? Oh. <laughs> okay. Mm. That's an interesting way to end this. Okay. Stream. Well, that's... go ahead, Golden. I got to really think about this. Um, what was the question? The question, uh, what ah. was the least favorite of the outfits you um, ever put your OC in? <laughs> That's that's hard because whatever kind of outfit I did like made, I would either make use of them or just have just just fall in love with it. Um cuz like I I guess the nurse outfit because the colors are kind of like jarring all over the place. Which nurse outfit? Uh there was a nurse outfit I put my character in. Like at one point I decided to do that just for the fun of it. Um, and then I put him. To, uh, I put the outfit to use when I was making a highlight reel of um, all the Doctor Mario uh, moments. And even then, like I don't even have that big of an issue. I'll just go ahead and post it in the chat. Um, post this here, and I'll go ahead and post this here. Okay, I can see why. Um, may I ask a question and a slight critique? Okay. So why did you go for pink? 
Um, because I've normally have been used to seeing your outfits in pink colors uh, over the course of my childhood. So I just went with that. Okay. That is fair. I'm only curious because, like, there are lots of different colors. Blue is especially very popular. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I guess... And blue would actually go really nicely with your character because it would bring out your eyes. Yeah, and it would also go with the complementary colors of, of mm -hmm. the base color of his character. So, yeah, that's understandable. Uh, the plus side I like about uh, this one is I, I put little bows on the shoes to try something a little different. Um, yes, Magical oh. Star, like, yeah, no, when it comes to playing puzzle games, it's, I mostly just do it just to, you know, I do it just to, you know, just irritate bliss in a oh, humorous <laughs> accent, yeah, uh, uh, aspect, yeah, trying to find the right words, um, aspect, aspect, yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm now just mentally remember them, that wasn't my fault, that was so your fault, that wasn't my fault, you Fucked it up! <laughs> Bliss getting so mad over how I was playing, like, many of these puzzle games are absolutely funny. Tetris 2 was literally, like, the funniest one out of all those puzzle games that I had with mm -hmm. Bliss's presence. Solar, like, just added on to it. Like, Solar, you're seeing this shit! I'm witnessing it with my own looking balls! Correct. <laughs> Looking balls, <laughs> Riley Brown. Oh my God, that's amazing. Who did that? I didn't. I don't remember. Somebody posted it in the chat a uh, couple of years back. That's brilliant. I love that. <clears throat> that's hilarious. <clears throat> All right, so I think it's Purple time. Would also work. Yeah, I think it's time we wrap this. Uh, wrap this up. This has been uh, quite a comeback for this podcast after you know a, like one month of. Just missing out on a few things. Not the end of the world. Um, I was glad that I was able to cover the things that we wanted to cover. We had a lot yeah. on this one. Um, thank you for anybody in the stream who was sticking around. Uh, anybody who was listening in from YouTube. Thank you if you actually, you know, listen to a majority of the podcast or most of the podcast. Instead of just skipping to the end. Some people would do that. But um, that's not my choice. That's on them. You're kind of missing out on some fun things that we have on the podcast. Uh, so that being said, any final say uh, things to say to any of you, starting from top to bottom? Peter, anything you want to uh, like to share before we uh, end the podcast? No, I'm good. All right. Dusk? Don't forget to hydrate. Yeah. Drink lots of H2O. It's coming up to summer. People need to stay hydrated. Oh, absolutely. They keep oh, God. The, the summer heat, dude. Like, what's also, like, it doesn't help... That on my end, the air conditioner has been down for a while. So we've been having to deal God. with no air conditioning whatsoever. So that's... Hydrate. That's a hell in a basket. Hydrate. Yeah. Oh, we've been drinking a lot of water. We've had Good. so much... Like, we at least have a faucet that functions. Because otherwise, we would have to go to the store and buy so many water bottles. Um, but yeah, we've been trying mm. to hydrate on that as much as possible. Um, many times I've had glasses with ice in, like ice water, and it's just like, uh, like just a simple drink of ice water is just satisfying. Um, if anything, it's better to have than drinking lemonade or soda. Soda would just make you more thirsty because of all the sugar yes, in I, it. Yeah. Thirsty. I feel called out. Thorst. The thirst is real. <laughs> Riley, I'm a fan of brisk iced tea. Even that will still make me more thirsty. I mean, I'm 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 joking. I keep a water bottle right next to me at most times anyway, so I was, I'm good. Uh, well, I was also playing along with, you know, your joke. Anyway, um <laughs> So, what's your final say, uh Riley? Please clap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Solar, since you came just in time for the um the Halo uh rip and tear, anything you would like to say? Remember, if you do not intend to support a series because it is written by incompetent idiots, uh, it is always morally correct to commit piracy, <laughs> which is what I did. Uh, <laughs> you think I paid for Paramount, Paramount Plus to watch their fucking show? Uh, no. No, I did not. We, we on I the Golden Pond. Yeah, I went to the trouble of doing that because it, it's, it's really just something for me to talk about on the podcast. Uh, but at the same time, with Paramount Plus, I can watch Indiana Jones flicks or any of the old Star Trek movies. 
you know, or just you can also do this with piracy. <laughs> <laughs> we at the Golden Fox Podcast do not condone the act. Solar, is, is your answer to everything just commit piracy? Uh, honestly, piracy seems to be the most popular option. I mean, it is, Fair. but I think the better way that you said in the first place is that, you know, if watching something, if you, when it comes to, if you do not want to support, you know, bad writing and such, then yeah, piracy would be the answer. <laughs> Uh, but if there's uh, like if there's like good ratings and such, and you're spending your money, like it better be worth the time, you know. Anyways, um, that about wraps it up for this podcast. Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, I do apologize for the the pockets of silence and any awkwardness that I brought here. Uh, trying to make a consistent conversation is a little bit challenging in and of itself, but hopefully that will change and develop over time. Until next time, I'll catch you guys um, at a later time. Sometime in June, which I think will be interesting. Um, I'll be ready to talk about Top Gun Maverick, along with a few other titles that just left my brain for a second. But um, I think it'll be a, quite an interesting podcast at that point. But until then, ciao. Catch you all later. Have a great night. Yep. I've got to get in there. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>